got it locked on Rhodium Radio. Hey, Tony, drop that. What, please? I bet. Dr. Dre in the place to be. Cold rocket shit with my homeboy Steve. After Rhodium. Get stupid, son. Yo, don't think that you can get none of the The motherfucking doctor, the bitch hopper, the sucker motherfucking stopper. I'm fucked up, so don't mind what I'm saying. I'm just kicking it with Steve, Tony, A, and Susan. Yo, we can choose it. Dope shit to put in a mix. Know what I'm saying? We kick shit like Bruce and Bruce and Bruce. That's a fact. And if your shit ain't in a mix, you know it's swag. And that ain't no bullshit. I'm kicking facts on a serious tip. Word up, Dr. Dre's in full effect doing serious damage, boy. Tony A! Tony A! When you're ready, go. Welcome back, everybody, to Rodeon Radio, episode 147, and on this Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, I should say, you know, I want to thank everybody for your uh, birthday wishes. Uh, I'm truly blessed, and I'm truly honored to have uh, not only a good family, but good friends uh, and a good team, and last night, we had a great time, and I want to give a shout out to MC Pancho and Chamorita. Uh, we celebrated their anniversary at 99 Bottles in Orange County, so I want to say much love, much respect to them, and thank you guys for the invite, man. A lot of people that were there uh, showed me love, and I want to thank you guys for coming up to me and talking to me and, you know, telling me how much you guys appreciate and love Rodian Radio, uh, because this would not take place if it wasn't for you guys. If we didn't have subscribers, if we didn't have the Rodian Radio Warriors on the live chat, you know what, we wouldn't even be here. So we want to thank you guys. Uh, um, Everybody who's subscribed, everybody who's liked, everybody who's commented, everybody who's wishing me once again happy birthday. Thank you once again. From the bottom of my heart, today I turned 53, but though I feel 33, really that's, the, really that's how I feel. But other than that, I'm actually, I took off my chain off of Yoda because I, I had a sporty today. This is an old Compton Indoor Dookie chain. Uh, it's actually real, it's, um, well, real fake. So um, uh, I had a sporty today. So with that being said, you know what, before I introduce my special guest, um, I just want to say that, um, once again, I feel honored to still be here. Thank God for another day, for another year. And uh, once again, uh, today's wish when I blow my candles was that God will bless me with a long and prosperous life. So other than that, once again, back by popular demand, Ralph N., the Mexican. Hit him with something, brother. What's going on, Chief? Happy born day, Tony A. Hell yeah, my brother. Let's take them back since it's Easy E weekend, brother. Yeah. Always wanted to uh, catch them right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? That horn sounds like some taxi, taxi, <laughs> lady cab driver, homie. That's right. You know what? We're going to have a lot of that tonight, man. Rest in peace to Easy E. Rest in peace to Prince. No doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely, my brother. Taxi, taxi. I got to get to Tony A's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. So, you know what, Ralph? Last time you were here, yes, sir. we had such a fucking blast, bro. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people truly, truly appreciated you being here, you kicking your knowledge, us sharing beats and talking about, you know, music. Uh, because I believe that today, uh, most producers, not to pick on them or make fun or whatever, most people today uh, call themselves producers. They're, they have a laptop and a keyboard, okay? And you know what, if that's your thing, you know what, more power to you. Back then, for us, it was just a little bit different. You had to have thousands of dollars. Not that they, we were rich, but this machine was between 2000 uh, or 2500 Now, tell us a little bit about what you have there for those that may not know what that is. Oh, yeah. This is the uh, MPC 3000, the original Roger Lynn design. Um, i got to give a big shout out to Bruce Forat out there. One of the... Uh, absolutely one of the pioneers along with Roger Lynn. He was the guy that was actually in the laboratory creating and fixing all the bugs for the early Lynn drum machines like Lynn 9000, the LM1. Uh -huh. Those were, speaking of Prince, those were the drum machines that he used on all those on all yeah. his records, yeah. which was pretty incredible, man. You know, to take that one drum machine and those sounds 
and to variate with so much music like wow right right even to this day those records still stand and so, and so um you know mpc 3000 roger lynn um you know definitely cutting edge as far as the drum machine if you will this one here is you can sample in stereo uh we got stereo of course with the sp 1200 you know that's mono and um so it it really helped me advance or with the production as far as uh -huh. uh, you know sampling time and i could sample drums and stereo and it gave me more options although i still love the sp1200 hell yeah okay look you know when this one came out everybody was using this one okay for um you know uh what's uh dr dre mm -hmm. from uh, joe cooley when he did uh, mm -hmm. uh uh but you don't hear me though he did it on this okay nice. yeah now from there came out the Akai MPC 60, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Then from there came out the 3000, and then the 2000. So now, there's some people that say, I have the 2000, I can never give me a 3000. Do, do you know why that one went out so fast and why it wasn't available anymore? Yeah, the truth behind the, the Roger Lynn and Akai relationship is that after the 3000 was created, Akai, they, I guess they figured that they could take the ball and run without Roger Lynn, if you will. Oh, okay. So they never, I don't know what happened in terms of the contracts, uh -huh. but I do know that when those 2000, 2000 Excels, um, when those were created, they did not have, or they don't have the Roger Lynn stamp on it, if you will. He didn't have anything to do with those. So what they did was they took the original design and then, and then they, said goodbye roger we can make more money without you and we'll just we'll sell it sell this as an akai product right where they fell short of the glory because those drum machines they had a lot of issues and i'm not knocking them i'm just saying that officially those are not roger lynn samplers okay drum yeah. machines etc and so um it's still it's still a decent invention i mean the 2000 xl they have the time stretch option which even i've talked to other cat i've never touched one to be honest with you i've never touched the the i had a 2000 when they first came out that's because right. i couldn't find an npc 3000 right right and then i'll never forget joey guerra from tierra right the group tierra right you know um he used to work at nadine's music in hollywood oh. and he he sold me that 2000 and then like about a month or two later, I was able to find this particular MPC 3000 through someone who's like, literally their their sister had it. Like, I was like, wow, really? And uh, I bought it for 1500 bucks, oh, which shit. these were $3,000 when they came out. $3,000. Yes, sir. Bro. I mean, and we're talking about 90s? Yeah. yeah, this was 1999 when I got this, but MPC has been standing as long as uh, the original Roger Lynn designs have been standing strong, just like the SP 1200. I mean, right. they've gone up in value. When the MPC-60 came out, I believe it was in 87. It was like SP-1200 came out in 87. Yeah. This was after the SP-12 and then the emulator and all those. Right. SP-1200 in 87. Those were 3Gs and so was the MPC-60. Right. And we were talking about this earlier, right? That you were right. saying that, that they, didn't have mo they didn't have that option to be mono, right? It right. was only poly. Let, let, let's educate them a mm -hmm. little bit on what mono and what poly is. Mm -hmm. Because... What it was, it was like this. Let me give you an example. Yes. Ho hopefully I can. Uh, <laughs> you, do a, you do a mono and I'll do a poly okay. example. Exactly. Mono is this, that I can play this beat. And I can, every time I hit the pad, it'll start over again. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, poly, MPC 60 didn't have mono. Mm -hmm. Okay, now hit play poly. go on forever with that yeah that's a perfect <laughs> example on why i hate it not that it was not good but that feature yes of uh um the mpc 60 yes that you could not mm -hmm. you know uh, uh you, you know have mono yeah it was limiting right like yeah. it, it, so a lot of times cats i mean of course polyphonic rhythms and of course monophonic meaning one and then poly meaning many um it's interesting because it's good for certain stuff. Like I've been able to use the polyphonic option mm -hmm. uh, with different things, with keys and different. So sometimes you want to get certain feelings right, 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 that right. like a real keyboardist, right. uh, and it's good for that. And, yeah. and so, so for, yeah. For an example, uh, uh, SP twelve hundred had a mono. Then we will play yours again. So every time you hit it, on it'll the one. start over. Yeah, on the one, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now play, give me another so poly. Okay. So I'll give you the. 
That's straight. That's that's mono. And then here we go, poly. Oh, excuse me. I'll put it back to mono. So let me go to the poly. I hope I didn't just blow your ears out out Dude, there in I, the world. When I started using the MPC sixty, yeah. I fucking hated that, bro. I was like, there's something wrong. How come I can't? Yeah, right. You just you know? wanted one shot. Yeah. You know, you know what? I'm going to play something really quick mm -hmm. that I did because, okay, I got this beat. I took a hi-hat, okay? Yes. The thing that I like about the SP-12 is that you can put it on the same output, and every time you, Ooh. it'll cancel out. Yeah. Okay. Dope feature. So here's, okay, here it is right there. So I... Right when that boom, boom, the second kick hits, I yeah. hit the hi-hat to cancel it out. So now it sounds like this. Okay, so now here's a, I'll put it back in. See, and that's the dope thing about this drum, that you could do anything you want with this fucking drum. I, I just love wish those, man. I like how you flip those too, man. Let me play one more time. And it's all within the hi-hat, putting it in the same output, and it'll cancel out the sample. So super dope. So if you ever want to break it down, play some bass. Boom. Boom ba -dum, boom. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, man. No, that's dope. I like how you flip that Thank drum you, right there, dude. Hey, I never heard anybody flip it like that. Hey, you know what's crazy, bro? I'm gonna share something while I load something else up. The, the response that we got from this episode, the, the last one, part one, yes, was so fucking enormous and so good that I actually had dudes telling me that I, I just thought you were a podcast and I thought you were lying to us this whole time. <laughs> and and I, I was like, you know yeah. what? Like, I didn't get it. Like, but I guess there were people going around saying that I never did anything or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's all good. But you know yes. what you do? You don't argue. To, you just show them. That's right. And you know what? That's the power of the drum machine right there. You yes. know, you ain't no fake. You know what I'm saying? And, and I love that. I love that you that you waited at least till I arrived to, to be able to display the dope music that you have to offer. You know why you know, I'm drinking Red Bull today? Because I know we're going to be up for a long time. Okay? <laughs> it's we, a birthday, y'all. <laughs> it's a birthday. Hey, hit him with the comments on the HBD. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to play something to you. Yeah. I know you'll recognize it. Most heads won't. Mm -hmm. I did this, and uh, I had Be Real, Mellow Man, and Send Dog rap to it. Nice. Okay, I did this in 1987, mm. and uh, we all took pictures together. Never came out, and I still have it. Uh, as a matter of fact, when B was here, I told him that I was going to uh, email it to him. I haven't yet, yeah, because I haven't transferred it. So, but let me ask you a question: How did you meet them? Cypress Hill, uh, you know, San. They were DVX still, right? Were they still no, their group? No, DVX? no, they were Cypress. Were okay. they Cypress at yeah. that point? So I met, I heard of them, I want to say 1991, mm -hmm. before our album dropped. We were still working on our album. Okay. Um, half of our album was already done in like 1990, mm -hmm. but they had us go back in there yeah. and change not only some beats, but lyrics. That's why our album took a little bit longer to come out. Later on, I'll play a song, yeah. uh, the original beat that they had me change. So, I'll, But uh, I'll dope. explain that. That's awesome, man. So what happened was, yeah. there was a guy named Funkin' Klein. I don't know if you remember. I love that dude. Yeah, Hollywood Records. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because you mentioned Casualty last time and Funkin' yes. Klein. I, you know, I know those guys, man. I crossed paths with them. The last time I saw Funkin' Klein was when he was in the wheelchair. He passed away. Yeah, yeah. and he yeah. passed like, shortly after that. Yeah. One thing I'll say, just to, since we're talking about stories and reminiscing, um, with Casualty, of course he was a guy that slept on house of pain he was the, we yeah. gave him the first option to listen to those records and he slept on cypress hill absolutely that's how i heard of cypress hill along with him. jerry davis if you remember jerry davis from ascap who was another guy who was a big cypress hill guy he was helping them in the early days he worked at ascap and he had a lot of connections at ascap so he would give mugs uh opportunities to to get money from ascap publish uh, not publishing money but money to go into the studio right like budget then, yeah like the, i don't know how they would work that out but th there were these uh demo budgets i guess if you right. will and so there was a few that Jerry Davis was very excited about signing Cypress Hill, and then he never did. He started a label at Interscope, one of the early labels, which they signed uh, Felicia Morris, AKA the Poetess. Yes. He had a group called Poetic Groove Records, uh, that from what I recall, if that's the, yeah, Poetic Groove Records, and it was on Interscope, and it was a subsidiary to Interscope early on. This is still early 91. And I always tripped out that 
They slept on Cyprus. Yeah. And then we gave Casual T the opportunity to listen to House of Pain. And I just remember the reaction was, they sound like y'all. And that was it. And it was just like, he was not impressed. And then of course, Tommy Boy came into the picture and then they swept him up and that record took off. 1992 mm -hmm. at the Gavin Convention in San Francisco. Yes. That's where I met Everlast. He let me hear Jump Around. And that's where I got acquainted with B and uh, Muggs and those guys. Okay. It was more of a handshake mm -hmm. until we started getting billed on the same shows. Yeah. Then that's how I started getting to know. But I was always talking to Send Dog more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Mellow, I would just see him high, you know, here and there. Sure. But that's I, a trip. So then uh, Mellow, you, you actually had more of a relationship with Sin in the beginning, right? In, in the very beginning, because I would cool. do, do shows, you know, mm -hmm. B and them would be either in the hotel or whatnot. Sin yeah. would be out and about. But I did this old school cut, and I remember mm -hmm. B-Roll goes, man, you know what? And it tripped me out. When I played it, he goes, man, I always wanted to do that song. I didn't know that. So I'll play it. I love that. Remember record, that shit? Man. Come on. True Mathematics for the Money. Produced by Eric Vietnam Sadler. Bomb Squad, y'all. Ooh, hey, they classic right here. Shit, maybe I'll bring it back. Watch. Man, I love this beat, man. This is right beat. Ooh, uh, come so on, man. That's that exciting, one. man. That's production right there, man. That's what made me want to really touch the SP and, and make beats like that, man. Cats like... Uh, like I said, it was, uh, yeah, Eric Vietnam Sadler. That's really the guy who was doing a lot of the programming for Bomb Squad. Everybody had their position. Uh -huh. Hank Shockley, he was, you know, he knew how to mix and he knew how to bring in elements and he was a master at that, as well as like Keith Shockley, who was always finding sounds, all that cool, right. all those cool sound bites and stuff like that. Keith Shockley um, was, well, you know, so everybody had, and Chuck D too was part of was part of the Bomb yeah, Squad. Yeah. Eric Vietnam Sadler was the programmer. He was the one that was really those those flips, right? I mean, you know, those parts where we hear the drums right. moving around and stuff. That's that dopeness, man, that he brought to the <laughs> table, and I really love that guy for that. I've never met him, but he's uh -huh. he's something else, man. You know what, man? Um, when I went back, uh, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. What mm -hmm. made me get back into production mm -hmm. was that um, I was watching that hip hop uncovered when I interviewed uh, Rashidi Harper, mm -hmm. the director. Okay. He was executive producer and director. Mm -hmm. A lot of people slept on his interview, bro. Mm -hmm. You need to go back and educate yourself not only in that documentary or that docu series, but also what happened during that time. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. how hip hop and pretty much crack took off at the same time. You know, right. and there's another another documentary on Netflix called Crack that I also recommend because they also play a lot of fucking hip hop, Word. and it's, it's like watching a fucking cracked out documentary of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Captures the moment at that yes. time, right? Because you saw what was happening, and the music reflected yes. the epidemic, if you will. Yes. Now today, mm -hmm. what does today's music uh, uh, reflect? Well, somebody's still on crack, but it's not the same feeling. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody's, I think it's like Robo Tussin rap, if you will. You Robo know what I'm saying? There's a lot of cough syrup and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, whatever other stuff. Pressure price beats. <laughs> and you know, we're just having fun with it, man. You know, uh, I know everybody's got their uh, drug of choice, if you will, you know, but I think it's gotten a little out of hand. It's gotten will. a little out of hand. Yeah. I think t today, uh, what the hell is that guy's name? Uh, little Zan, Little Xanax, or what's his name? Little Tucci? Or is it uh, no, no, Little, not little, little. little no, 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 L Little Zan or X. Zane? Zane? Oh, Little Nas X. Little Nas okay. X. What's okay. he up to now? Because I know last time he was. Oh, well, this is what their music stuff. reflects. He released some yeah. satanic shoes. Did you hear about that? I didn't know. Yeah, yeah but so I can imagine. Sure. That each pair of shoes supposedly mm -hmm. contains a drop of human blood. Like, yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, come on, bro. It's ridiculous. I mean, really? Yeah, it's like even the little uh, Uzi Vert, they were saying, like, if you say his name, little Uzi Vert, little Uzi Vert, little Uzi Vert, little Uzi Vert, you start, you start saying Lucifer after, yeah, after yeah, a while. Yeah. Oh. So I don't know what the fascination is with this whole satanic uh, worship, if you will. It's just funny to me because um, don't you have something better? Like, it, I mean, I understand a gimmick, a marketing tool, but... If you if that's all you're gonna rely on, I mean, is, after, is, after Satan plays out, what's next? Yeah, man. You know like, what I'm saying? Like, you ain't even doing it like Kiss. I mean, at least Kiss was secretive about it. When you know, Kiss means yeah. knights in Satan's service. Right. If you're familiar with that, right? Those that know, know. But uh, when I found that out, I really tripped out. You know what I right, mean? Right. But, you know, of course, that was a gimmick. Yeah. Also, just like with Ozzy Osbourne, you know, yeah. doing his thing with the with the 
can and people drinking, eating bats' heads. And yeah. Rock and roll. You know what's crazy? Stuff, How a lot of know. these young kids are dying mm -hmm. off of pills mm -hmm. and Ozzy Osbourne's still alive. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Ozzy's still going strong. And some of these dudes died already. <laughs> and for what? Never to be remembered again. Never man. to be you know? remembered again. Yeah, yeah, man. So why give yourself, why die over foolishness? That's, yeah. that ain't cool. But you know what we're doing? We're celebrating yes, life, bro. Yes, That's we are. 53 years of Ooh. living with mm -hmm. the drum machine. Yeah, man. And you know what, man? I want to give an opportunity to load something up. Yes, man. Okay, and here's what I want to do. I want to play something. Go for it. That I kind of like did, I want to say like in 97. I, okay, let me yeah. see. Okay. My kick, matter of fact, I got that kick from Quick. Let me play around. I love Quick, man. The Q kick? <laughs> yes, that's what it is. That's what's up, man. Uh, come on. Okay. Let me see what this is. One of the dopest drum breaks around, bro. Put those together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little pop belly in there. Yeah, you know what I'm exactly. <laughs> you know that. Okay, All I found records, little, a little wah wah. Okay, then a little, little piano. Okay, Ooh, then we have. Oh, man, this is gonna be incredible. Okay, my snare. Take them there, Tom. I got some UFO noises. Oh, that's dope. Okay, that's, that's one. Fine, oh. Yeah. That's two. Yeah. So I put it together with. So here we go. All of it together. What year did you make this in? 97. Ooh. Little pop belly in there. Yeah. Yeah. Then the beat kicks in. Here comes a wah wah. I like that. The nice little, little piano sample. That piano is rocking. So. You know what? And this was just shit that I would just get drunk to and just fuck around in. And it's been sitting in, my, in a shoebox. I love this beat, man. It's just, it's, it's, it so, takes you into that, it's timeless, man. Yeah. You can imagine where you were at that time and it's still creating excitement in the present. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Watch. I love that, that. Then it's gonna come back to a little uh, UFO shit. Just the bottom B with the pop belly sample. Snare the kick. If anybody wanted, just hit me up on the DM or What's inbox. Up? Hell yeah, man. Like, I'm going to be slanging my shit. Serious inquiries only. You know what I'm saying? Same with stuff that we're working on. Uh, you know, so if you hear something you like. Hey, man, they're for sale, but they're not 50 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to up that. Or we got to kill that already. Cause, exactly. Yeah, because exactly. that's just, that's not good business. You yeah, know well, I'm today, saying? you know, you got guys on a Fisher Price uh, laptop, and you got a kick and a snare, clink, 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 clink. And got that, that's fucking dope right there, bro. <laughs> we'll shoot a video in front of the liquor store. Let's go. And that's, that's what we... Yeah. have become today. Mm -hmm, sure. It's, and it's like I said, we're at a, we're at, I'm at, like I'm, I already see the level of mediocrity or media, you know what I'm saying? Everything that's mediocre coming from these new artists and I'm not knocking y'all. I'm just saying like, step your game step up. up, go back and do some research. Um, some of these guys don't even appreciate music and, and I'm not dissing them. I'm just saying like, if you love this art, and you love this art form, hip hop, and, and everything that goes into it. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears goes into this. And I don't mean the devil's blood, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we ain't doing that one. But a lot of hardship goes into these records. And um, if you really wanna get that real true hip hop flavor, man, Tony A and Ralph M, that's your best bet in 2021. The mix again. I wouldn't lie to you, son. You know, <laughs> you know? And so with that being said, uh, let me rock a beat real quick, if that's cool. Go for it, go for it. And then, uh, We'll talk about it afterwards, but here we go, y'all. I like that shit.
got Ralph M in the place. That's what we call production. Tony A in the place. Hell Happy yeah. birthday. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving life right now, man. Hell, That's yeah, why I brought the hard, big man. boy out today. You didn't, sell you, that. you didn't sell that already, did Not you? Not yet, man. I'm working on a project right now. I got to give a big shout out to Strictly Cassette. We're working on something right now, and it's going to be lovely, man. So um, I'm real excited, man, at this present time. Dog. Uh -huh. It's like it's a good time for cats like us because there's nothing out there like that. Right, and right. I feel that we can make an impact. You know what I mean? As far as our flavor, being his, you know Hispanics coming from Los Angeles, you know Harbor area, um, yeah, man, it's 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 a good time right now. And cats that want to buy this and want to inquire about these things, yeah, I mean, yo, they're up for sale. It's just we want to make great music. Yes, that's most important. The right. money, yeah, we want to make money too, but the most important thing is that we leave a legacy with our music and absolutely that's the most important thing right me. no yeah, i yeah. i do think because you know what ultimately as a producer as a rapper mm -hmm. you you want to be able to say you know what what's my legacy you know what's it going to be yeah, you man. know is it going to be that i was a fucking asshole <laughs> or that i was a dope producer word you know and that i yes. made fucking people get goosebumps when my beat fucking kicked in when that fucking snare when that crash hit you know what i'm saying yeah. when that kick drum hit that's yes. like that's my Ralph M shit. Yeah, you know? man. So and, and so, yeah. Thank you, man. Where, where uh, people get a hold of you on Instagram? I know your Instagram's coming up. Yes. What, what are you most active on Facebook or Instagram? Well, what I'm going to do when this cassette is because we're releasing a, a limited edition cassette, but we're going to lay it out real lovely, man. I mean, if you've seen some of the packaging, the Strictly cassette, everybody out there on IG, go to Strictly cassette, uh, rap tapes on Facebook. Um, that's cool cat out there, my dude BP. He's doing incredible things with cassettes because he's a cassette head. You know, That's he dope. loves and he and they're collectible. So it's not like he's just putting together a mixtape that is just like basic. It, he's doing the packaging. He's doing everything that it takes to create something that's very unique, collectible, and um, you know, one of a kind, man. He doesn't do duplicates. Like he's doing a real dope one right now for the SB twelve hundred. No shit. And it's it's strictly cassette, so it's SC twelve hundred. And I was like, oh, when I saw that he was putting that together, man, I got so excited that I had to share the pictures. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I was like, I want to be a part of that. And I thought it was a series. Right, right. But he was like, I'm only going to do one thing on it, and uh -huh. that's it. So I said, okay, guess what? I'm going to do one with you, and we're going to do this right here. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? The NPC. So we're going to lay that next. Um, and that's what we're working on. I got half of it done right now. So far, we're going to come up. Uh, we're going to meet up next week and finish okay. the, the second half and, and just put it out there for people, man. And, you know, really come with something visually and, and, and musically that, that will help push forward the envelope of, you know, hip hop music. So is everything that you're doing right now, yes. is that off the S uh, 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 NPC? Yeah, this one I created on the 3000. Okay. Yeah, so I'm transferring a lot of different sounds and stuff uh, from the SP over here and vice versa. Okay. Because you know, since it's mono, a lot of the times, if I sample it to the 3000, it's cool, but I can't sample it in stereo. Right, right. So, but it's all good because I can make up for it in the studio. There's different things that we can do uh, with some of those beats that, and I don't want that all the time. Right. I want them to get that SP1200 feel. It's, it's because if you think about it, um, even those early records of Cypress Hill Records, Public Enemy, Funk Dubious, when those records were created at House of Pain, they were all SP-1200. I got something I want to tell you really yeah. quick before we go to a commercial, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I did a couple of shows with MC Breed, rest in peace, you know, oh, Ain't No Future, your friend. Love that dude, yes. Okay, one day uh, we were in the studio and uh, I believe I shared this story before, and Quick uh, was in the studio and he was tweaking tambourines, uh, shakers, uh, crashes, and he was like, man, you gotta get these motherfuckers sounding clean, the motherfucker sounds crisp, this motherfucker. Entry B turned around and looked at me and here's what he said. He said, man, we did Ain't No Future in your front and my boy's uh, 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 bedroom mm. sounded like shit and sold a million copies. I love that record too, man. <laughs> I remember Send Dog used to play the hell out that record when right. it first came out, man. So and um, yeah, man. My point in sharing that is that yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. I think we can over engineer shit, and the beat's not even fucking banging. If the beat's fucking banging, try to get it as clean as you can, and then let it go. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Because the people are the ones that are going to determine what a hit is. I mean, we could say we got the next summer anthem and nobody cares a fuck. And nobody gives. That's <laughs> right. And, and like you said, you spend too much time getting caught up in all this pretty bells and whistles stuff. Right. And one thing, I'll say this, and one thing just to add to what Strictly Cassette, what, what he taught me was he told me, he said, hey, finished is better than perfect. So sometimes you gotta just go ahead and, and, and just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, 
it's better to be finished than to be perfect. Yes. And so, you know, so thank you for that, said, man. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and go to a 10 minute break. Word up. Yes, yes, y'all. Go get, grab your drinks. Go get your whatever yes, you need yes, for the next segment because it gets deeper. Yes, yes, y'all. And then we're going to talk about how Funk Dubious came to be. No doubt. We're going to keep them in suspense. And you yeah, know what I got? You yeah. know what else I got, man? I got some more DJ Quick cards that I didn't play last time. Oh, man. And I'm thinking about announcing the artist I'm going to be working with, bro. Oh. So, you got to hey, stay tuned, y'all. You don't want to miss that. So, yo, we'll be back 10 minutes. Take us out of here, Anthony. Rodium Radio, 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 Radio. Somebody text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this yacht. Somebody text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this yacht.
Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this yacht.
Welcome back, everybody, to Rodian Radio, episode 147, the birthday bash edition. And uh, we're going to go ahead and bring out the three with no micheladas after the next break and uh, give our boy Danny three with no micheladas a big ass shout out for blessing us with some bomb ass michelada pineapples. So sounds exciting. Hell yeah. And, I, and then I got some like extra anejo tequila coming out. Oof. We're about to get. We're going to sip, up. okay? Sip and, and gargle, or however you said it. Remember you said gargle, I think. So That's once right. again, Ralph M, the Mexican. Yes, sir. The, I, I got to practice saying the Mexican. The That's, Mexican. That's dope. Right there. That's dope. <laughs> so brother, what do you got? What do you got for us, man? Okay, so uh, oh, we're going to get right into it, huh? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, hold up. I have this one part on here that I like. I never get to use it, so. sound bites for this too man i just haven't uh incorporated them yet it's coming though man i'm gonna flip this right here y'all <laughs> that's for all the people out there so you don't steal that beat you know what i'm saying you gotta buy these beats they're for sale okay that's all we gotta talk over them so they don't try to loop it right right I would give you more, but you know what? You could DM me for that. You know yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah. what? I, I, I yes. want to share a little something. Word. First of all, that shit was fucking banging. <laughs> and the reason why we talk over it so nobody tries to cheap, you know, loop oh, it. Oh, you know how come they out do. With you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, we want to give you a snippet of what we have to offer, although it gets greater. And um, yeah, man, definitely. Right. We we want to, you know, of course, man. We're producers, man. We we can create. Even if someone is to take that, there's nothing that they could do. Where, we'll, where I can always reinvent it. I right, could always right. put my touch on something, even if somebody tries to do something with a creation or whatever. It, it's happened before. Um, I don't trip. You know what I'm saying? It just makes me greater. It makes me want to do even a better, uh, you know, freak that idea even right, right. even better. You know what I mean? Right. And so it's it's a lot of fun, man, and it does bring out the best in someone when you uh, they feel like oh damn okay well no nah, guess what i'm not done you know what i mean and right so it's an exciting time like i was saying earlier man like i really do feel like i'm at the probably at the best i'm at i'm at, I'm, I'm at my best right now since the beginning and i'm thankful for that because i remember in the beginning how we talked in, in part one and for those who haven't seen that you should go back and revisit that yeah. episode 138 right that's the introduction and um, it's a trip because back then I didn't know anything. I, you know, I just I just went on off of my intuitive sensibilities. Right. And of course, loving music and just being imagined, having an imagination. Um, that's key, you yeah. know. And so for me, I'll never forget, man, I went to sleep one night and I just prayed and I just the desire in me to understand music and to just become better to become a better producer to really really understand music not just so that i can make money off of it but that sort of it's like literally something that i possess within me and right. my whole embodiment you know what i mean as a human being etc and i'll never forget man I, I went to sleep and then i woke up one day and it happened it clicked something finally clicked inside of me that i could understand music i could understand the key structure right tones and pitch and and mixed all that you know mix all that with imagination right and now we got some super bad powers bro you and, know what and I mean? i'm glad you said imagination because dope producers have imagination biters just still ideas you know what I'm saying? And it's a yes, sir, man. And so, you know, we out there, we're going to catch you, you know, <laughs> but, hey, hey. but nonetheless, I mean, of course we, we, um, we want to educate, uh, yes. I, you know, that's something we talked about legacy. I'm not married. I don't have children in 2021. Um, I feel like if this is my legacy. These are my children. And so a lot of times, I don't know if, what it is, 
uh, sometimes people kind of like make that impression on me, like, hey, you know, you're not married, you should have me, you get married. Everybody wants me to get married and have children. And I'm just like, hold up, I missed a lot of bullets. I ducked a lot of bullets before having to do that. And right, right, right. I see right. what people go through, and I'm not knocking it. It's just that was, that's never been for me up until this point. And it's not some, so I don't knock it. It may be one day. You know, I, I hope so. I want children. I want to have children. I want to have a beautiful wife. I want to have a loving wife, somebody who's dedicated. Of course, of course. My parents, they're going to celebrate their 50th anniversary this year, actually in like a month. And so they're still together. They still sleep in the same bed. They still, I mean, wow. I'm very proud of them. Awesome. Yeah. And so for me, if it's not ideal to that, if it's something that's not comparable to that to that greatness excuse me boba you know, <laughs> if it's not something that can measure to that or greater then i don't want it you, you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna call something okay yes sir uh Jure told me this years ago and then he repeated it in the defiant ones documentary mm. he said a producer is only as good as the artist that he's working with okay yeah think about that one mm. a producer is only as good as the artist that he's working with mm -hmm. you said right now that you're at your best i feel like right now after meeting this artist that I'm going to introduce later yeah, on, yeah, that I'm in my prime. Wow. Hey, man, congratulations with that, man, because great artists are hard to find. Very hard to find. Yeah, man. Very hard to find. And so, so. when you have that synchronicity and that chemistry going, man, it's just like, appreciate that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's like the chemistry that I had with uh, Sun Doobie, with T-Funk, with, even with Cypress Hill, with those guys, and House of Pain. Like, there was a, there was a hunger and a desire to want to make great music. And um, I, I'm just so happy that I was able to experience those things as, you know, half my life ago. You know, those records are 25, two, going on 30 years. We're celebrating yeah. 30 years of Cypress Hill right. in 2021. That record came out, I believe it was August 3rd of 1991. That was the official release date wow. for Cypress' self-titled debut album. December mm -hmm. will be 30 years that my album dropped, uh, High C. I'm as well. Yeah, Celebration, bro. man. Awesome, Come man. on, man. As a matter of fact, we're gonna have to toast to that before Hell. it's all over. For Hell yeah. Real. As well as your birthday, man. Because I'm. Hell yeah. Thank you for having me, man. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Um, like I said, you know, we're still building our friendship, our yes. relationship, and I like that, man. Right. Because that's what great relationships are about. It's about the happiness that you bring into that relationship. And so I feel like you know you got good vibes, man. Thank I can, you, my I can gel with that. You know what? And I'm glad. I'm glad that you feel comfortable. I'm glad that we have chemistry where yes. we can share and not worry about. I hope Ralph doesn't buy my shit. No, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, I, I, right. I love it that we yeah. can we can be here yeah. and share our music. Yes, I'm going to play you something really quick mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, somebody asked me, uh, um, and I answered it last time, but I want to answer it again. Okay. What's my favorite song on the High C album? Yeah. And I said it was a song called Two at a Time. Okay. And it's talking about a girl taking two at a time, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean, and I'll leave it at that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> we were uh, meeting with a guy named Michael Eisner, which ran out. Everybody knows who... It, if you're in the music industry, at least at one point, you should have known who Michael Eisner was. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. this guy was making good billions of fucking mm -hmm. a year. Okay. He ran all of Disney. Wow. And yeah. uh, we had me and he had a sit down meeting. Mm -hmm. So he's reading the lyrics of the song two at a time. Mm -hmm. And then he says, mm -hmm. uh, this is saying, girl, take two at a time. I'm sure you won't mind. He goes, what are you guys talking about? And then Heisey goes, well, it's about a girl taking two guys. Yeah. You know, and then we went on to talk about other things, but he goes, when I hear this song, I'm right. envisioning a porn. Right. And he said, um, well, yeah, that's what he said. And then he kind of, he said, well, look, you're going to have to change the chorus because <laughs> right. I don't want it to say that. So we had to kind of like change the chorus up a little bit. Sure. And then he told me, I don't like the beat, change the beat up a little bit. So the beat, just the bottom beat yeah. that we played uh -huh. in, uh, our, in the album version, this is the original beat just the bottom beat okay same loop but yeah. bottom beat so okay so, so wait a minute let me get this clear in my mind this is the original idea before the suggestion to change the beat to from michael beat eisner and, and i'm curious some of the i mean i know this guy is m very wealthy multi-millionaire what um i wonder what his experience was with with music if any I no mean, i don't think he had any but he knew enough to say yo that beat i don't like it or whatever it was yeah, that he I don't was like suggesting it. he was being constructive of course yeah but that's interesting, man. Because this one to mm -hmm. me was a little bit more dancier, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I wanted. Yeah. So I just took a kick and a snare and a hat and then I just like did it. Yeah. But uh, he just did it once. He goes, when I see this, I envision in a porn. And this is this is Disney. <laughs> this is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> right. You know, so we're like, oh, fuck it then. Yeah. So yeah. this is the original one. It's, uh -huh. It ain't too much different, but some people will get it. So go for it. 
Oh, shit. You know, and to add to that, too, the thing that's crazy, right before you drop the beat, I just want to say one thing in relation to what Michael Eisen was probably thinking in terms of, like, because, you know, at that time, 91, man, they were on us yes. about explicit lyrics, the warning labels on the records, yes. you know, that whole battle. Censorship is un-American, of course. Yes. And, um, yeah, so interesting. Maybe he was probably tripping. So uh, you guys will remember this. One forget that. That's beautiful right there. You go. So he just didn't like the bottom me for some reason. Wow. And you know that's funny because that's of course I don't know. I don't want to give that beat away right, unless right. you want to talk about no, it. No, because motherfuckers will go sample it. Okay, so. so I won't say who did it. But right. you know there's like three versions of that? Of that particular drum pattern on three different records. No shit. And it's interesting because we always wondered like, okay, so was it the same drummer? Or were, or were cats like switching the reels and just recording the drums? Well, I'll say this. There's three records out there that have that same pattern. Because that's a loop, of course. Of course. Right? Yeah. Of course, you know, you chop it up. Of course, you do what you're just like you've been doing earlier. But it's cool that you did it that way because that leads to this story. There's three records out there that have that exact same drum pattern, dude. And it's a trip, man. And I'll tell you about it off the air. I, I like it because it's really danceable. It's really, mm -hmm. you know, I like yeah, that Yeah, man. No, that's fly, man. That's like, remember looking out the front door? Your yeah, chorus. Remember, hey, chorus. That's then, it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I did? I yeah. found the original. Because mm -hmm. looking out the front door was by, uh, was it? Um, the, oh, oh, main Source, right? Main Source. Yeah, Main Source, Large Professor, you know, et cetera. Okay, I guess I... That's cool though, you still chopped it up though, see? This one right here? Yeah. I even sampled a little scratch. That's dope. No bass line, no nothing, I'm still building it. Nice. That's like from like 93. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's dope because it's in there so subtle, so low that, that it's, it's just beautiful ear candy. So, mm. whatever I don't sell, I'm gonna give it to Anthony, right, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> All good, brother. What's coming, Anthony? What you speaks. got, man? You got anything on there? I do. Let what you got cooking in the I'm... lab right there, bro? <laughs> Let me see. Did I pull it up or am I tripping? Let's see. Let's and like go. I said, I still got all the quick shit, so I'll play that at the very end. Just, oh, just to get on. your lips that's wet, I got to tell you guys that. Yeah, man. That's the business with those quick beats, bro. Obviously. But you were telling me you've been digging. Th I mean, you said you went through most of your discs and you only had like one disc, disc read error. Right, right. That's read crazy, error, bro. yes. That's interesting there. That's good. You took care of it, man. That's good maintenance. It's I take, important. I take with these care floppies, of my shit. You know, these floppies here is very important to store them in a cool place. If you can, store them, you know, uh, vertically, if you will. Yeah. Like records, you know, that way, you know, of course, the dust and heat and everything else damages them. And of course, you know, when you're throwing them around and doing all this abusive stuff to them also, man, they get, I lost right. so many great ideas just from, sometimes the discs are just, mal, you know, they, they, um, they have a, a you know they, they malfunction they already come from the factory with that error right you know, hey, so. you know what's crazy uh just to touch on that yes. is that uh how producers today we're not picking on nobody but i'm just letting you know what we had to uh, deal with mm -hmm. that producers today don't ever have to deal with that malfunction floppy like if this motherfucker malfunctions right and you did a fucking killer ass fucking beat on this bitch you know what's <laughs> gonna happen you yeah. lost it if it says disc read error Right. That means you just lost your whole damn oh, song. Oh man. Oh. So and if, if you had a good memory, then you know what every little sample you took from from every record. Absolutely. So you, now yeah. you got to rebuild it. And that's so important to remember where your sound sources come from. Go for it. Play something. Yeah. While I'm pulling this up. Here we go. Fly. Then the beat kicks in right here. as hell and i just found something dope i get a kick snare head find a dope ass loop and just build it and save it for later you know yeah, what i'm man. saying no no that's awesome dude said, man we, those are great foundations what, what year did you make this if you will it had to be like 96 97 okay you 
usually I, usually I, no, actually, you know what? 2001. Wow. See where it says 01? Oh, yeah, yeah. I usually try to put the year there, bro. That's dope, man. But that's 20 years old, man. 20 years old. Yes. Wow, and today I'm 53 years old. That's something? <laughs> wow. So that no, means salute to do, that, man. Do the math. I was 33. 33, bro. <laughs> there we go. All right. I got this here. Of course, I'm just going to run through it. Let's go get to it. it. Yeah. Oh, shit. Check this out. Yeah. Right now, but check this out. I'm gonna flip this right now. I see what I did. You know who I could see rapping off of that? Bro? You know what the first person that came to my mind? Who's that? Jay Z. Jay Z. Oof. Come on. I need some of that Jay Z money. Yeah, man. we all For do. Real. <laughs> yeah, we all do. Yeah. Now, Jay, Jay Z, hit us up. I gotta give you. I gotta give a big. I know. What's up, Jay Z? Hey, we got a million of these right here, man, and we create on the spot. So these are just ideas that we love. Yes. You know, they come from the heart. Although I have to give credit where credit is due. Yes. The first producers that I heard sample and use this sound source were the Beat Nuts. And I got to give big salute to, to Psycho Less and to, Ooh, and to Juju. Better watch yourself Junkyard now. Juju. Yeah, man. Those guys are incredible, man. Corona Queens. You know, and so let me tell you the story real quick. When I first heard that, it took me a long time to find those sounds. The thing was, I had the record. I had the sounds. I just was slipping you yeah, know, right, sometimes right. you get records and you get excited and you listen to you're listening to all the wrong parts and then i'm you know this particular record it's got crazy snares and dope dope parts all throughout the record i just couldn't and that's one thing that i'll go back to saying was certain things that i had to develop an ear for i couldn't hear those what they used back in 93 i never forget they used this on um uh, for a drop a radio drop for the Baker Boys. And I remember we were going to the airport. And it was in the morning time. It was like Baker Boys in the morning or something. And I, we turned the radio up because we were always, our record had just came out, Funk Dubious at the time. And we were going to the airport. And I'll never forget, I heard this on the radio and I just went crazy, man. It's like, yo, that's set well. Like, it's just that, you know, it's that, it's, you know, you know what I mean? When, when, you, when you just climax, when you hear something that's so dope. Look, 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 it's like, it's like, it's like having an eargasm. Word. You Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, good music has no expiration date, bro. That's why we say, well, I was just 20 years old. If it's just put together dope, it's put, put together dope. Mm -hmm. 
the, mm -hmm. the problem that I have with today's music, and I yeah. say that to encourage and inspire producers mm -hmm. to make timeless music. A lot of people do music like that's what's hot right now, mm -hmm. and then your so-called mixtape will be gone in a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, especially right now, things are so right faddish, and the the listenership is so um, the attention span is just here today, gone tomorrow. And nah, man, come on. That's why you think these '90s dudes are still around, and the music is still so dope. It's because yo, man, there was a lot of a lot of heart that went into that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, Oh, real quick. So the same thing with this. The cool thing about the the, MP, the MPC as well, you can chop the, the notes up and you can chop the loops up. So that's what I did in this particular section. That's why I could be like. Mm -hmm. Now that's the whole loop in there, what you heard when I was. Now, you know what yeah. I like about that? Like for, yeah. for people that may not know when you hit it, yeah. when you let it go, it stops. Yeah. Can you do that again? Yeah. 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 Now, if you hold it down, it'll play everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking hard. Okay, so Trip, and that same concept with, because originally I sampled these on the SB-1200. Right. So I had two SB-1200s. One had the drums, and that one had the samples, because there was these samples were like almost two seconds long each. Right. So I used up about 2.5 on each pad. So the four parts take up about 2.5 and I didn't sample them on 45 even though I wanted to to save time but right. then I said you lose some of the quality as well when uh, when you're dealing with the analog uh, sampling be, be, because Go for it. Yeah. the sound starts to sound crunchy when yeah. you start you know yeah when you do it especially and it's cool you get more sampling time out of the you know you get more you get more bang for your buck although you lose some sound quality so that's for all the producers out there on the SP1200 if you're doing that that's cool do what you gotta do and I'm doing that now yeah, it's hard for me too sometimes. Right. I'll do it if I if it's just a sound that's like, okay, that's just a sound bite that I'm not, doesn't necessarily have to be big. Right. Because everything shouldn't always be e equal. There's got to be space. Like the drums can be in stereo. The bass line doesn't always have to be in stereo. It could be mono. It's right. just how you mix it because you feel more of a, of a lower, of a, those those tones, right. bass tones, et cetera. So they don't all, everything doesn't always, and a lot of times I got caught up in that. I was like, oh, everything has to be in stereo. I can just sample everything in stereo. It's, true. it's like, yo, it's true. hold up. Now you're not allowing any room for anything to breathe because everything is big. And, you know, right. so you learn these things. And I'm teaching you this right now if you don't know this, you know. And, and if you, you don't know, now you know. <laughs> you could tell that I slowed this motherfucker down. I didn't even got no bass line. It's fat though. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. Man, you can go crazy with the bass parts on this. Yeah, huh? I know. Yeah, we're gonna keep talking over this, okay? So that way, you know, you gotta buy this, man. Exactly. And <laughs> hey, 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 you know what's crazy, bro? That this, okay, yeah. has no bass line. I was gonna have some like some acoustic guitar played over it, like mm -hmm. when the beat breaks down like this. Yeah. But I had to make the other part of the beat on a different floppy because was, I had no more time. Wow. So whenever I would lay it down on a two inch, I lay this, you know, obviously we lay the same thing, we run in MIDI, yeah. this will go first, and then I gotta lay the second one for the parts that doesn't, you know, cause it goes, better nap, better nap, yeah. better nap, better nap, I had a. No, I feel you, no, 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 that's what you're doing. You're being right. very strategic and it's intensive care when it comes to producing these things. Um, I hear what you're saying, man, you gotta, but it's good, that's a fun beat, man. Thank that's you, one brother. of those beats that you can really, just have a blast with creatively speaking, man. And that's we got a dope, couple man. of minutes before we go to break. But that's nice right there, Right bro. before we go to break, I want to yeah. play something that I did like in 2005. Okay. And you won't hear the bass line, obviously, because I use a lot of live musicians. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to have somebody play percussions on it. Yeah. But uh, it's just more like the kick, the snare, the hat, and the, the horns. You so, ever meet Professor Baldwin? He no. was a percussion guy. Passed no. away a few, but he was one of the go-to guys. Tony G worked with him a lot. Okay. I think he played on the, he might have played on La Raza. I think that's Tony playing some of those yes, parts in there yes. as well. So, but he was a great guy, man. What a what a an awesome musician. And that's the cool thing too is like I used to be scared with musicians because I didn't know. Like I was telling you before, with like cats like Leonard Caston and other. When I was around real musicians, dude, I was intimidated, man, because I didn't understand. But that's when you have to just take a step back and listen and understand where musicianship and how musicians think when they talk about music and when they talk about, they'll explain stuff to you. You just gotta be there listening and paying attention and don't interrupt. So exactly. 
Yeah, so it's funny because one thing that hit me, I said, you know, you hear these stories at certain times. Sometimes, you, most times, you can't go up to a musician and start asking him all these questions about how'd you do that? I don't, you, it's best to wait. Yeah, yeah. It's best to wait until they get around to talking about these things. Right. Because when they get to that story or get around to something, a question that you may have, you're going to get it. And you're going to appreciate it as opposed to if you're just forcing their mind to go somewhere. They might be on A and you're on Z and they don't want to go to Z. <laughs> They're like, dude, I don't even want to talk about that right now. Right. And so right. sometimes that's how musicians think. I think in rhythms and in numbers. So my whole life is based around that. Basically, uh, pretty much numbers. Exactly, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Rhythmic if, patterns. If there's yes. any producer out there that you would like to sit down for at least an hour and have dinner with, who would that be? If anybody, I'll give you mine first. And then you Whoa. can kind of have an idea, okay? Damn. My, yes, go would, for it. No, tell me. Would be Quincy Jones. Q. He's yeah. a Pisces too, bro. Oh, Quincy no Jones shit. is Pisces. He's March 14th. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, Let me tell you a Quincy Jones story real quick, man. When I met him uh, a few years back, it was funny because a good friend of mine sees, real good dude, man. He, he's from Hawthorne. He's a record head. Uh, this guy, man, has, he knows jazz. He's a Mexicano. He knows jazz like, wow, it's nobody's business. Homie. Right. He knows what's up. Salute to C's Hernandez, man. One of my one of my confidants, one of my guys. And he's a younger guy. This guy's maybe 10 years younger than me, but he knew more about music than I did in terms of jazz and catalogs. And he had like this whole impulse catalog, which is like, he, he was into that, collecting jazz catalogs of hard, collectible, rare um, musical gems. And so he ended up getting an internship at... Um, at uh, K Jazz 88.1 FM um, out of Cal State Long Beach. So anyhow, this guy, man, serious, man. He's got every, he's got even the elders looking at him like, yo, who is this kid that knows all this music and is on it, right? So he knew who I was and yeah. I met him at a pool party or something about like 2010. And so I was just impressed with his knowledge and then he was impressed with me because, he, you know, he just bought those records in the 90s and stuff. So he was right. like, yo, I know who you are and blah, blah, blah. And we became really good friends. I haven't seen him in a while. So I'm looking for you, C's, man. I hope you're doing well. I hope your family's doing well. I hope everybody's doing good, man, um, in your family. But so not to, not to, uh, to wrap it up, uh, with C's, what he did was... Um, Man, I'm losing my train of thought now. I, I think I'm gonna get back to that story. I think I just want to talk about C's real quick. You're thinking about the Micheladas. <laughs> but um, yeah, the Quincy I haven't Jones had one story, yet. bro. Oh, Q, oh. thank you. Got me back on track. Okay, so I meet. Uh, so he takes me to this place because he knows Q. He knows all these guys, and they they respect him, and they they like they're tripping off of his of of his uh, knowledge and just who he is. And they're like, who's right. this kid? So I was the same way. So he tells me, Yo, man, I'm gonna take you to this place. Quincy Jones is gonna be there on a, on a panel discussion. It's a museum. We went to UCLA. Literally, it was around this time. No shit. It was like in March, something like that, right? And then so he, um, so so we go in the rain. We parked. I forgot, man, dude, to get to this Royce Hall, wherever they were at this particular place in UCLA, because UCLA is huge. You get lost in there trying to find just basic stuff, right? So. We're drenched when we get to the to the to the place where he's sitting and Q's sitting there with a bunch of other greats and they're talking about pictures of, you know, just all this incredible stuff that they experience as jazz musicians and um, you know, them being on tour in, 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 in Africa and all this rare pictures and right. stuff. Okay, so trip this. So anyhow, to make a long story short, we see Q at the end of the discussion. And then Q's about to leave with his security and he's about to get on the, on, the, on the elevator. And I'm like, yo, yo, hold up. I was like, yo, man, I'm a Pisces. And he just, the doors are about to close. And then all I just hear somebody go, wait, hold on. <laughs> and the doors open back up. And then he comes out and he looks at me and he goes, what day? I go, February 22nd. He looked at me and he goes, March 14th. Then he put his head back in and the elevator's closed. And that's my Quincy Jones story. Dope, dope, you know dope. what I'm saying? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and take a little um, 10 minute break. Yes, sir. We're gonna start drinking a little bit. Oh. I wanna play this one. Please. And I'll be honest with you, mm -hmm. I try to do all kinds of different music. So if people laugh at this beat, mm -hmm. it's okay, you can laugh. I don't give a fuck. Play it. But, yeah. but I wanna say that uh, I kinda made it so you can rap to it. Mm -hmm. Slow it down a little bit. Keep in mind, it needs a bass line mm -hmm. and it needs some percussions. Okay. It might throw you off a little bit what it is, mm -hmm. but I think you'll like it. That's dope, dude. Now See watch. what I'm talking about? 
You can't be scared to sample. Have fun with it, man. I like to break down a little bit. Ooh, come on, man. To get up and start dancing, homie. So, <laughs> we'll be back, everybody. Ten minutes. Make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Ralph M, the Mexican, is in the motherfucking building. We'll be back. Vamos, vamos. Saludos. Michelada time. Call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodeo Radio is live up in the Biatch.
Jay, chilling at the rodeo with my homeboy Steve. Be on the lookout for our new 12 inch, the shit is dope. Yo, I like to say what's up to my homeboy Dre, my homeboy Prince of Jazz, and the girls with the big ol' ass. So trip, I'm about to bust one more time to let y'all niggas know just what's on my mind. In the morning, police at my door, fresh to be this week across my bathroom floor. Out my back window, I make my escape. Didn't even get a chance to grab my old school tape. Mad with no music, but happy for free. And the streets to a player is the place to be. Got a knot in my pocket, laying least. Welcome back, everybody, to Rodian Radio, episode 147. I actually almost forgot, I haven't even started drinking. But uh, here's what I'm going to do. Just uh, play a little elevator music uh, so that you guys can groove. And we're going to announce the 310 Micheladas. We just got blessed with some pineapples. So um, this right here is the shit. So I have to display it like this. So let me go ahead and pour. And we're gonna sit, man. Oh yes, happy so born day. You gotta get with three one zero you guys. Yes. If you guys want the funky shit. What's the IG? Uh, three one zero Micheladas. Three one zero Micheladas, everybody. Okay. Yes, yes, yo. And here's also what I got. I also brought out the extra anejo patron. We're about to fuck shit up. <laughs> okay. Now, Am, how you doing, my brother? Oh, I'm loving life, man. Pleasure to be here. You got your pineapple out? Oh, yes, I do. Micheladas in full yes. effect right about now. Okay, so here we're going to press pause right there. Yeah. And um, I need you to put your pineapple over here, brother. All right. Cool. I need uh, the drum goes before the pineapple. So, <laughs> Piña so. para la niña. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but you know what? Let me go ahead and give a quick shout out really fast because I know if I get buzzed and I forget, people are going to get mad at me. So let me go ahead and give a quick shout out to uh, Keen Abina for blessing me with this Michael Myers shot glass. And you know what? Much love, much respect, all the way from Las Vegas. I want to thank everybody that loves and supports me and has been there for me since day one. Once again, 310 Micheladas. Omar, my boy Omar, DJ O oh Boy, uh, DJ The Gap, DJ C, uh, B Scanless, Miss Gatis from Brooklyn, New York. She's taking out tomorrow, so she wanted to come by and say, let's chill, let's hang out, let's play some music. Yes. Let's make it happen. So, uh, did I, oh yeah. And stay tuned, everybody, because at the end, I'm going to introduce the artist that I'm going to be working with. Okay. Word up. This guy pulled me out of retirement. I had to dust off the cleats. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Back and I, in effect. Yes, and I also want to give a, a shout out to my boy right here, Greenspan. Julian. <laughs> Homie. Okay, he don't, he got oh. fired, so he can. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, well, I think that was a shameless plug. Although I will tell the story. That's how when I saw him earlier. Yes. I was like, I know this kid. Where have I seen this kid? Yeah. And then you were telling him he's a tattoo artist, and then um. And he sells corn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Give so, me a shot glass, bro. Oh yes, sir. Where and so go? and so with uh, with Julian. Yes. When I saw him. Then it finally hit me, and I asked him, I said, man, where do I know you from? And, and he was like, Greenspans. And I was like, oh, that's right. You were the guy that helped me at Greenspans. Yeah, that's him. He helped me find all those Charlie Brown shirts that I have in my collection now. Right. And so I'm very thankful. Uh, and that's how we met. And it's funny because we, we talked about you. Yeah. We, we was like, Tony, yeah, yeah. Da, da. And then we just mentioned you. I don't know. Right. I forgot how we even got on the topic, but right. but but it, that was a cool moment, right? Yeah, there, he, he got caught still in a pink tank top. I don't know why. He's <laughs> <laughs> I'm only playing, yo yo. It's all love. Julian all love. in the house. Salute, you know what, man? Let's let's take a little sip. Yes, sir. Let's sip because I don't doubt my shit, but I want you to sip, and I want you. To, uh, I wanted to recommend this extra anejo patron. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. So, super stuff. Hey man, happy born yeah. day, feliz cumpleaños, y muchos más. Muchas gracias. Yes, sir. You know what this motherfucker tastes like to me? Like some cognac or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, it's very pimpish. Yes, yeah, like yeah, that. it's cognac style. That añejo, yeah. man, it's nice. Only for pimps. Oh yeah. With oh. a hit of smoky at the end. <laughs> so yeah. What you got? What you got for us, bro? You got some funk or something or what? Oh yeah, I got something because real special right now. Since we left off on you talking about musicians and matter of fact, man, that last beat you played, man, was really, really dope, man. See, that's what I'm talking about. You can't be scared to try things. And that beat right there, I could hear somebody like a pit bull. Yeah. I could hear somebody, you know, one of these new artists. Yeah. You know, because that's what, you know, no hay nada como lo Latino. 
you know, and my dad used to always tell me that, and I really understand what he means now when yes. he tells me that. And it's like, when you get that support system from Latinos, you just can't go wrong, man. And when you do it right, like something like that, coming from the SB 1200, hey man, you 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 hit up, you hitting something, you're, you're opening up, you're tapping into something that's, that's just, it's, it's you're tapping into a new market, if you will. And I know these guys, they do stuff like that all the time, but just, the way that that felt, it, it's a boom bap. <laughs> like it had that boom bap in there. Hell bro. yeah! And, and and yo, that's what gives it your fingerprint, man. You and know what boom bap came from? Where would it come from? From a girl bending over and like boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Ba you heard it first here on Rodeo Radio. Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Salute, man! Hey, we gotta take a sip for that one. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! One let me let, sip for that one. You told me we gotta gargle it, or what was it? What was it? Okay, so you just let it kind of like swirl it around the front of your mouth, so that it goes into like yeah, there you go. Mm hmm. Sexy. <laughs> Nice. And nice. it's great when you meet, uh, well, for me, single guy, no children, when I go somewhere and I meet a woman and she doesn't know how to sip tequila, it's great for me to explain these things. and Educator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. Yes, sir. Go ahead, so, Okay, brother. so check this out. So now this is just a track that I created with a good friend of mine, Tom, Don Thomas. Yes. Don, I, we call him Donald Thump. Okay, <laughs> he's the homie too, man. He's like really, really creative guy. He's 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 my elder. Yeah, he's somebody who used to actually work with Skate Master Tate. He worked with uh, the Concrete Crew. He was part of the Concrete Crew. Skate Master Tate, rest in peace. They had a deal on Fourth and Broadway. They had a song called Justice to the Base. Okay, so this guy had been around me all my life, and then finally I met him like in 1988. He's you know he's class of 1980 at Fairfax. Right. He went to school with like Red Hot Chili Peppers and those guys, right? Oh no shit. I'm class of 90 at Fairfax High, so uh, he's 10 years before me. But music brought us together, and that's why this song right here is called Music. So check this out. <laughs> down in here. Oh yeah. Oh shit. One more time. That's right. It's a party, y'all. Celebrating life right now. Tony A style. Rhodium Radio. One more time. I'm ready over there. <laughs> Music. That's what we love. That's what we live for. Hey, um. What's up, Wade? Go ahead and press right high real fast. Yeah. Here we go. One more time. World, world, premiere, yeah. premiere, premiere. And then nobody's ever heard this beat right here. This is a Ralph M. track along with Don Thomas. Of course, it's for sale. And uh, we're not done, y'all. Yeah, we're, we're not done. We're not done. The reason why I say stop, because I just saw mm. a kid bringing out his keyboard trying to play that shit over again. <laughs> <laughs> not the Groove Buster. Please don't Groove Buster over it, huh? No, that shit was hard, man. Thank it, you, it, man. It was, was there another part to it? Because I think you um, were going to... Yeah, there's a... Bro, there's like 10 sequences Go ahead, here, good. man. Freak I got, it. I got Just freak it. Yeah, right? And so... Um, 
the thing with that song right there is I came with the guitars and the drums, and then we came together and we just started putting it. You know, he's playing it on playing on the on synth. This guy's a big Roger Troutman, P Funk. Uh, you know, just just one of them guys that's taught me so much about music and and you know his listenership has also, has also inspired <clears throat> me uh, in my musical quest, if you will. Right. And um, so big ups to Donald Thump, a.k.a. Don Thomas, man. You know, that's that's my Not big to be role. confused with Donald Trump. Not to be confused. There's <laughs> <laughs> one and only original L.A. dude right there, man. And uh, we always make great music together when we come together because I'll come with an idea and then he'll match that. It's like question and answer. And then if I don't know about something, he'll teach me about it. And then. You know what I'm saying? Like, and vice right. versa. We still educate each other. I, I like the yeah. fact that producers can work with producers. Some producers don't want other producers in the building because they think he's going to buy my shit. You know, mm -hmm. look. Right. Uh, I put something up the other day on uh, social media. Let me see if I can bring it up. Yes. And I think it's important to bring up because uh, somebody kind of quoted something and then he kind of corrected himself. He said, you know, I never saw it like that. I put the only thing about being dope yeah. You have to be prepared to be copied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. So yeah. this one person commented something, and I wasn't mad, but I just disagreed with the quote. He said, yeah. the biggest form of... Um, Imitation is flattery. Is flattery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once again, repeat that. Yeah, so the highest form um, yeah, of... I guess, yeah, you're uh, flattered by people... Copying you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell you why I never agreed with that quote. Mm -hmm. Because if you're copying my style, if you're biting my shit and making money, yeah. that's not flattery to me, right. bro. Exactly. It definitely is not. You know? Especially if people give it to them when you know damn well where they got it from and you inspired. Let's say you might have made a... Like, let's say, for example, we'll take... Um, okay, so there's, there's a good example. If you go back to this artist, Snap, who did the song, I Got the Power. Right. Originally, Mark the 45 King did that track with Chill Rob G. It's yeah. getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. It's getting out the lyrics and the way that song was produced was a thousand <clears throat> times better than Snap. Although he sounded similar to his vocal tone was similar to Chill Rob G's, and he made a, he he went all over the world with that song. Where Chill Rob G, who originally was the original artist who who not only used that music first and made a great song called The Power. Check that out. That's on Wild Pitch Records. Chill Rob G um, for 1990, 1989, 1990. Wild Pitch Records. Why? Well, I haven't heard that shit in a while. Yeah, man. and that's the same label Main Source was on, yes, of course. And, yes. uh, you know, other greats like, um, you know, there was there was a, a Gangstar. I was about to say. Yeah, Gangstar was definitely early. And I remember that guy, Stu Fine. <clears throat> he used to send me records. This was when I first started on K-Day. And thanks to Orlando from Delicious Vinyl, he was getting cats to send me records. I'd get right. records from Tommy Boy, A-List records, you know, mm -hmm. test pressings. That's how I got the De La Soul stuff. Um, well, of course, we had a birthday this week, DJ Maceo, you know, salute to him, De La Soul. Um, also with, um, you know, with going back to Chill Rob G, a great mm -hmm. artist that deserved all of his all of his respect yes. for making a great song. But Snap came in, took that music, and then he was the one that was traveling the world while yeah. Chill Rob G had to go get a job, you know? And it's like, you know what I'm saying? like. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So, you know, it's not flattery, bro. If not you buy all. somebody's shit yeah, man. and you're fucking making money up, you, 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 you're a biter. You stole shit. Yeah, man. You know? And, you know, some of these cats, they don't care because they're capitalists and that's all they care about. And so that, that goes back to what I'm saying is that you're so much more the experience that you that it's priceless. <laughs> it's um, what do you call that? It's it's uh, you can't put a value on. The, the you know your ability to incorporate music into your life to understand it to really learn it to really like wow look at like Quincy Jones for example like somebody that's he was 50 years old when he did Thriller like and that's <laughs> what a lot of people know him from you know what I'm yeah, saying exactly but, yeah but a lot of people don't know like he made songs like that it's my party like he did that record during the times when he was struggling producing and stuff like Frank that. Sinatra yeah man you know and he was a musician also he didn't succeed in that aspect although his strengths he was able to find in production and right. arrangement. Right. So, you know, I, I always say, man, like, it's cool if you do that, but go and help those people that you know you should be helping, If yeah. especially if you piggybacked off of their style. Br break that down just a little bit more where you were going to go with it. Yeah, okay, so are we still, um, oh, so uh, I think I got here, I started. And then I got one I want to play for you off of High C second album that oh, I produced. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's another 
a section with the keys as well. He's got a... That part right there is not supposed to be in there, okay? So if you take that and you use that, I'm going to know that you stole that. <laughs> supposed to be in there, okay? I'll stop it there. Um, that one part in there, I was I heard that earlier, and I said, you know, I'm gonna leave it in there for now, and we'll just make a joke about it. You know what I'm right, saying? right, right. But that's definitely a part with the voice that comes in that's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, so anyhow, but there's been records like that. Like I won't say the name of this artist, but they were they stole a, a song, they stole a, they stole a track from a producer friend of mine, and there was a glitch in the recording uh, while they were transferring from the SB 1200 and that artist used it just as it was and it was funny and that's how they knew they were like that was a that was a mistake on our part and that's how we know that you stole that from us right right <laughs> right 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 classic stuff man okay quick little story go for it um i wasn't supposed to be a part of thing that's pretty good uh, mm -hmm. i wasn't supposed to be a part of high c's second album something happened mm -hmm. and i was told that high c was going to produce the second album mm -hmm. well what happened what ended up happening was they didn't end up liking the way the route the album was going so they called yeah. me in and they told me hey you know we want six tracks and i said sixty thousand, mm -hmm. no problem and i even sold my publishing i said you know just give me another check and yeah we're good mm -hmm. so i went in there i found this loop on here and i added a bunch of little bullshit on there mm -hmm. but it turned out to be fucking dope Wow. And uh, um, but it didn't really the album didn't really go anywhere, and I'm gonna tell you why. Mm -hmm. And this is for people to learn that you have to have chemistry with your artist. Yes. You have to have chemistry with your artist. You can't. I can't just do a beat, have 20 beats lined up, say just choose one. If there's no chemistry between you and the beat, just like the way a tailor makes a tailor made suit for you. Yes. And it fits you perfect. Mm -hmm. That's the way beats are. Uh, yeah, man. That's what they, they should be made. Tailor made with the measurements, you know, to to the T. Yeah. yeah. So when I played a, a lot of the tracks for him, you know, without even though me and my boy are, are good, uh, me and Crawford. Yes. Uh, one thing, I just didn't feel that the chemistry was there, you know, with these tracks. But I'm gonna play you one song. No, please. Yeah. Oh. Remember that shit? Oh. Dude, I don't know why that fucking sample has just been laying there yeah. and nobody used it. Okay. I love that. Man. Bro, That's I my snare. That record, man. Okay, let me see what else I do. Those were one of those records that we heard on the radio, dude. That was like a KGFJ record right, right there. Okay. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> go Brooklyn, yeah. where's Brooklyn? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's funny, bro? Yeah. The whole time I sampled that, I didn't even know it said go Brooklyn. Oh, I, thought, I thought it was just somebody oh, chanting. Man. You know, that's dope. Now, bro. listen to it. This yeah. is the way it came out. Of course, you got to put the high half with the MIDI. Here it comes. Anybody wants me to produce a song again, I'll fucking re, uh, reinvent it. Revisit so. <laughs> that, huh? That's right. As you should. You know, and like I said, man, these beats are for sale, and um, there should be nothing to stop you from working with great producers. Um, if you're a great artist out there as well, you know, don't be shy, man. Reach out. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, my thing is uh, funkdubiousmusic at yahoo.com. If anybody wants to get at me directly, serious inquiry inquiries only yes no why bullshit. because we don't got time for all that man i don't want to go back and forth with you uh, penny pinching 
If you got a budget and you want, we'll start at a thousand dollars. How about that? We'll start there. That's the starting rate, and then we can up it. And if somebody else comes in the mix and ups that, then so be it. We deserve that. Yeah. And we, you're going to have something that you're not only going to be able to have for the rest of your life and perform and make money off of, right? And all that good stuff is that you're going to get something that's from historical cats for on the west coast man you know after the, yes. our, our last show mm -hmm. i got hit up okay yeah. and this is i haven't been hit up like this in a long time <laughs> but back to really quick before i tell you what i got hit up for yeah go back to my boy rashidi harper he did the uh hip-hop uncovered okay. that's why i tell everybody go revisit that interview people slept on that interview yeah watching his documentary believe it or not it was what inspired me to start producing again wow man i would just sit out fucking home bored sitting in my drawers with the remote control watching the TV. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then all yeah. of a sudden I started hearing just some old school shit, bro. And then I said, why not? Why not? That's right. You know, why not? So mm -hmm. that's why I said, fuck it. Let me go ahead and call the DJC, DJ The Gap. Hey, <laughs> I need it, homie. I need it. I love it. That's yeah. what's up, Those man. are my brothers right there, man. Absolutely, man. Respect, man. You, you know, know it's funny because I had found a sample that we had worked together on with DJ The Gap. Uh, back in the day and I had some of the parts in here I'm trying to see if I can find it it was just a class it was I don't I don't remember the whole beat because I think the disc was messed up speaking right. of disc read error uh, so anyhow I was able to salvage one of the samples right but I'll, hopefully I'll find it on here I'll let you know oh hell yeah I got a dope ass for That's in his wrong tones, but I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. They ain't gonna know what it is until I play it, but go ahead. <laughs> you know what? Bust that, man, because I'm still searching for some go. stuff right now. Yeah. That's another fly ass Sunday. You know, chilling with your girl. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I haven't even added nothing to it, bro. Cruising the boulevard. This beat is still butt naked. subject why don't we do this if you can load that up for me man and then just a sequence 07 and an okay. 89 you'll see it on there and this is just for all the fans out there because that's something real special okay uh you know sequence one of my early song. creations sequence or song mode uh just sequence okay so as i say uh, you'll see it right now i think it's sequence uh, seven and it's 89 point bpm hell yeah and so this song right here was one of the first uh actually it helped us get a record deal uh speak with funk dubious uh -huh. speaking of funk dubious um that was one of the early beats that really got not only dj mugs excited um <clears throat> the record labels as well okay and this is sequence what uh, i believe it's sequence 07 07 and it's 89 bpm 89.0 okay 89 if you can't just check it double check it if you can if you could just look at the disc okay it's, uh, let's see what it says there what does uh, it say 89.0 it's 07 cool yeah so uh, uh hit me with that maestro okay oh shit should, should change okay <laughs> something changed oh yeah 07 no, tempo 89 okay 89 let's see what we got let's see what we got for all the of true funk dubious fans out there let's see if y'all know what this is and this is raw this is from nsb 1200 you'll be able to hear the difference from the original to how it started in the laboratory. Okay, here we go. Damn, okay. So I didn't even have the bass line in there yet, or the piano. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, I got a, I got another disc there with it. See, so that's part of the process of what I used to do. Yes. Where, you know, before the bass line came in, then that's what the beat sounded like right. and just different sections of stuff so I, I usually would have five discs of the same idea and then just trick the the, the sampler be right. like okay well you're only giving me 10 seconds so i got to go back take a couple of the instruments and put you know switch out uh some of the ideas some of the some of the samples or sound bites and then those are saved we're going to use that but i still it, so it helped me just to think 
and to still keep creating. Right. Like I didn't right. let the 10 second limitation right. stop me. You right. just get another disc, get another take disc. a bass line, take a horn out, make some space, uh, time sampling time wise, and then keep going. Keep and then going. now you go to the studio with five discs. Now you're going with five discs. Now if you're anybody that goes in, back and listen to that song, that's called freak mode. That's one of the funk dubious early coins. Rock steady took the freak mode, y'all. Rock steady took the freak mode, and then so that was an early joint that we did that got DJ Muggs and and the record labels excited. So. What if somebody says, "Hey, bro, I don't have SP twelve hundred, but I want to buy a copy of that flip of that disc." Oh, come on, man! Just uh, hit, like I said, funk dubious music at Yahoo. Yeah, hit me up. That's at for business. Michael Myers dot cut. No, I'm only. <laughs> No okay. doubt, man. I'm still working on mine, so pull no, yourself no, I, some, I gotta man. pour myself another one. I got a big yeah. ass, big ass cup oh, right here. The birthday boy jug right oh, there. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. The, uh, absolutely, man. It's definitely, um, like I said, man, let's keep rolling. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I know time is of the essence. Most, most definitely. If you want to rock another one, I got another funk doobie beat if you want. You know, that way, Hold however on. you want to do things, bro. It's your, nah, it's your birthday. It's all good, homie. It's all good. <laughs> it's your birthday. I just came to dance, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Salute. I'm gonna play this one. I'm, yeah, I even forgot what the fuck it was, but um, and then after that you play yours. Please, you know That's I know right. people are waiting for the funk dubious story. We may have to do another episode, so we never know. Let's make them wait. How about yeah, that? We love up. y'all, but hold up. What right about now? Hold up. <laughs> Word. Rest in peace to Nate Dog. Yes, yeah, absolutely. March has been a hell of a month, man. We lost a lot of greats, man. Fife Dog, Nate Dog. Um, wow, so many. Fucking 2020 has been a motherfucking. Yeah, bro. Absolutely. Okay. I even forgot when I did this. Let me see if I have the date on here. Oh, one. So. 20 years ago. Just a little cool beat. I remember it. Fuck. I'll tell you a story. Cheers to that. I remember I was fucking buzzed. I turned on a strobe light and a lava lamp. And I just started sampling shit at night. <laughs> What's up? You created a vibe, bro. That's drinking a forty. Hell yeah! And you know oh, what? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Boom. And I couldn't even fucking rap, bro. And I was like, huh, 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 huh. yeah, right. <laughs> it was a uh, well. That's pre mumble. If you right. Will. You still were making sense though, but you know right, what right, 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 right. <laughs> Not to diss the mumble rappers, man. You guys keep doing your thing. Keep mumbling. We'll keep doing yeah. ours. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go you for know. it, brother. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, pass this over to you, if I may. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. Another. Uh, so that first song, that last beat that I played for you was uh, "Freak Mode," which was on "Which Doobie Ubi," the the debut Funk Dubious album. Uh, this beat right here also was created um, for the Brothers Doobie album, which was the second album. Okay. And um, that came out in 1995. So we're celebrating 26 years now. Yeah. Coming up now, July 4th is the release date of that Brothers Doobie. Uh, second album, sophomore bunch, album, if you will. We're a bunch of old fools from the old school. <laughs> Scoop, there it is. And those floppies are still in effect, man. So it shows you, man, that these these things are not uh, finite. These drum machines and these floppy disks, other than you might get an error here and there. Yes. But if you take care of these things, man, you don't got to worry about an upgrade. You don't have to worry about uh, does the computer still is it still work? You know, because they force you into these right. things. They do. They do. Yeah, and that they sucks, do. man. You know. Uh, do you yes, want me to play song mode or sequence? Uh, sequence, please. Okay. I hardly ever do song mode. Sequence zero three. A lot okay. of times I get the idea down and then I just start layering over that. Okay, it says ninety six point six, but this one says ninety six point zero. Yeah, let's do ninety six point zero. Ninety six point zero. Rhodium radio. Yeah, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Cool. What's up, man? That's fresh for 90. Well, we've created that in like 1994. Um, big ups to Reggie Stewart, who played bass on there. Also helped on a lot of the production for the album. He was one of our great studio musicians. He was one of the cats that came out of like the whole camp with uh, 
with different cats like uh, Chucky Booker and uh, all these dope dudes from from the valley that were making yeah. great records and stuff. So um, big ups to him. That shit hard right here. Yeah, man. Man. You got anything up there or you, or you want me to keep it going oh, over yeah. here? Yeah, oh, we can end it here and then what I'll do is I'll let me pull this one up. Go for it. Oh, I got this real quick just to keep the, keep the party vibing. Keep yeah. it going, keep it going, brother, yes, because sir. I promised oh. people the quick floppies, so I want to just give a little yeah. tutorial about those. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what do you want to talk about right now, if anything, while we're waiting for these machines to load up? Uh, we I'm going to just sit, bro, so okay, they can cool. watch. We're chilling and so. shit. Yes, sir. We are birthday sipping right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, this is the best element to be in, man, to create, to have your drum machine right in front of you, and just to capture inspiration, man. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the beauty uh, of it now is like, I mean, it's nothing for me to grab the phone and sample something. I'll do that, too. You know, it doesn't you, always have to be vinyl, even though that's preferred. But right. Yeah. You know, one thing I like, man, is that um, we can talk music, bro, educate people. Or even if they're not being educated, yeah. at least they're vibing with us. They're understanding music. They're loving it. True hip-hop heads, bro. Yeah. Love music, so they love seeing shit like this, bro. I you hope know, we, we got a lot of positive feedback from the part a lot one, of right? Positive feedback, which bro. I love, man, because that that means a lot, man. You know, the people were excited to see us come together and to explore what we have to offer, and that's that's what's up. Man. Here's what I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Next time, we'll we'll have a turntable set up on each side. Okay. 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 You bring your Akai or or the twelve. I'll bring my twelve, and we'll create a beat. All right, cool. let's do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, sure. You know, we'll just create a little bottom beat, put it on time while you talk. Mm. That's some nasty shit right there. Ah. You know, one of the honest, one of the best compliments is somebody gives you a face like. <laughs> yeah, you know that face. You, that's the classic boom bap uh, hip hop face right there. You know what I'm saying? We mean mugging that shit. It's like when you see something that you really like, you'd be like, oh, you'd be like, what's up with that? Hell yeah, that shit's hard. I don't know why that shit remind me of some Bruce Lee shit. <laughs> Into the dragon when he's on the boat. <laughs> That's right. And you're freaking out on here. Speaking man. of Bruce Lee, check out his documentary on ESPN. Yeah. Like Water. Ooh. It's called Like Water. Love that. Bruce Lee man. got a fucking bomb. What is it man. on? What, uh, Netflix or is the it on? E, uh, ESPN. Oh, ESPN. Yes. Gotcha. They, there's so many different channels now. Yeah. Amazon Prime, ESPN, Hulu. Disney Channel. Hulu. These are shameless plugs right now. But Rodium Radio. Yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> Rodium Radio on your motherfucking screen. Boom, bad meets the G shit. <laughs> The hip hop Jedi. Many F bombs out there now. Okay, I'm getting. I'm feeling good. Yeah, something so, you know. dope podcast. Ow. Hey, salute to that. Man. Salute. I'm getting open right now. Okay, the pelvic cool. sorcerer. You want to load something else up? I got yeah. some more stuff here. Uh, whatever you want to do. Okay, here we go. I'll just play that. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, one more go round, and then I'm gonna stop it. It's all right. Two, three. Oh, yes, yes, y'all. Freak, freak, y'all. Okay, I want somebody on the live chat to name this song. Yes. Okay? Now, I'm going to make it clear. You know how they say on Instagram, I do not own this music. <laughs> okay? Somebody produced this, but these are the floppies mm -hmm. that I have. Okay? Yes, sir. So, somebody name this song Oof. Part two on again. the live chat. Here we go. Not the hi-hat, but name the cut. <laughs> Oh, damn. Hey. That's on the comment section, y'all. Go buck wild right now. Man. Oh! I love how he puts those drops in there. Yeah, man. bro. That's sweet. Man. Okay, just for some of them, Tony, you're playing the CD. Here we go. That's right. This ain't no fake nothing. This is realness right here. So it's all there, homie. It's all there, man. It's that, all there. You heard it here, live and in your face. In your mascara. <laughs> okay, so here we go. One more time, y'all. Because you didn't hear it, put it on the live chat. Anthony, anybody got it? What are they saying? Quick is the name. Quick is the name. You know this. That's beautiful, man. Okay, I'm going to play one more. Well, I got a couple more. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... Cheers to Quick, no Cheers doubt, to man, quick, homie. he's always on it, and you know, he's very yes. inspirational. Mm. 
Something about sipping in this Michael Myers shot glass. It's fucking killer. It's getting nice, huh? Yes. Third eye frequency in full effect. It's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. <laughs> That's what we're there. Chill Rob G, right? Yes. Okay. Love that dude. Yes, what's up? I'm going to play one more. Okay. Well, I got a couple more, but then I don't know if you got something over there. So. I got it. I'm pulling. I'm loading up. Yes. Put this on the live chat if you guys recognize what this is. Okay? Here we go. Not the hi hat, but right this. Man, I heard that in a while, man. What what's the name of that song? Put it on the live chat. Put it on the live chat. Come on. What goes up? That's right. Uh, uh, what goes up must come down. But not us, clown. Right. <laughs> hey, bro, isn't it crazy that 10 seconds mm -hmm. equals platinum? Man, that guy, man. Yeah. 10 seconds equal. I was talking to Battle Cat. Yes. And he goes, I love that quote. Because we were talking about the SP 1200. Yeah. And he was like, I love that quote. 10 seconds equals platinum. <laughs> you had 10 seconds to Word. work with. Yeah. Today you got a gazillion seconds, bro, mm -hmm, to fucking mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. and fucking music is boo-boo. And fools just, they start, they, they, it's like they have too much paint. So now you start going over the masterpiece and you're doing yeah. some other. You got rappers today getting yeah. fucking girl nails, homie. Like, <laughs> talking about don't buy my stop. Don't worry about it. That's we won't. Right. No, nah, <laughs> hell no. Let, let, leave that to the young lady that's here in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, she's got the fly nails. Let, let, let her do the that. The longer the nails. You don't do that if you're a man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The longer the nails, the I guess the least you can wipe your ass, I, I guess. <laughs> Go for it, brother, because I got right. another one, and I'm okay. hot. Cool. Let's do this. All right. I got you right here. Let me pull this right here. Oh, here we go. Sequence three. Boom. Ooh, we. Let's see what we got. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What does that say right there? It goes. So the first one says love on. This one says groove on. The third one says what? It goes. Rap on. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talking tonight over this. Love on. You gotta have love for what you're doing, man. And you gotta be about it. Groove on. Remember you asked me a question about groove the last time I was here. So that was dope. Yeah. Rap on, y'all. Have fun with this. Feel Study. like I'm in church. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do on Sunday Night Edition right here. Hip-hop in full effect. And that's what we used to talk about. Yes, as far as we yes. felt dubious, yes. we really made hip-hop our religion. You know, when we would do interviews, we would talk about the greats that came before us. Especially Hispanics like, you know, Ch uh, Charlie Chase, DJ Charlie Chase, you know, Ruby D. Talk about Prince Whip a Whip, um, Crazy Legs, yes. uh, Tito from, you know what I'm saying? But from the Fearless Four. I'm not trying to get you fucked oh, up. Okay, no, no, no. Just buzz. Uh, you know, and, and all the crates that came before that, uh, you know, we want to give them their respect because those were the guys that, if you want to say that we, um, they spawned and helped hip hop. And, and, and helped, helped spawn into yes. groups like Funk, Dubious, Cypress Hill. Of course, Ramel Z. Right. Uh, cats like nobody who nobody even knows his name. I right. wonder if his name is Ramel, Romello, or something. Nobody knows who Ramel Z is. Rest in peace. Right. That's the guy that came with the yeah, party people. Just rock to the rhythm, party people. Inspired so many. He inspired the nasal style for cats like Be Real and uh, cats like Mellow Man Ace when he did Rhyme Fighter. Right. When you hear that high pitched nasal style. Right. That's where that comes from, man. Ramel right. Z, man. And he doesn't get those props, man. Right. So I'm here to give him his props give because him props, he's bro. a bad dude right there. Go watch Wild Style so you can see real hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? People call themselves hip-hop artists and don't even know the history of hip-hop. Yeah. Which yeah. is it was a quote that I read earlier this week that I saw MC Ren posted. So big ups to... You know, you know, you know let me say him. this. Okay, look at... If I could say it this way without anybody getting offended, look at hip hop like a Bible. When I say hip hop, mm -hmm. I'm talking about rap music. Mm -hmm. we, we got the New Testament, we got the Old Testament, okay? People always wanna go ahead and read the book of Revelation, see how things gonna end. Go back to the book of Genesis, which means the beginning, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Me saying that is this, that I educated my son yes. to music. 
Start from the very beginning, mijo. Mm -hmm. Start at the book of Genesis, at the Word. beginning. Yeah. And from there, that's where, that's where we're at. Bro. That's dope, man. If I may add to that, one thing that I learned as I kept studying and pursuing knowledge, not only world history, self-realization. Um, we were talking about that. Big ups to be scandalous. Um, we were talking about, because uh, we were watching the podcast that you do, right? The Freaky Tales, right? Freaky Tales podcast. Hell, and yeah. You guys talk about paranormal stuff. You guys yeah. talk about a lot of different topics that are interesting to me. That I find that interesting because I've always been uh, someone who, I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker of truth. And um, so speaking of Genesis, when I found out that the true meaning of the word Genesis is gene of Isis, Genesis, in the beginning, right? Gene of Isis. Uh -huh. And that's interesting because that, that connects with, uh, you know, of course, Kemet, Kemet, you know, uh -huh. before it was called Egypt. Right. Um, and the Kemetic, uh, you know, the pharaohs and the, 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 yes, you know, all that incredible knowledge that was, you know, the pyramids. And right. of course, we had our experience with that as well. You got right. Olmecs in Mexico. Yeah. You got the Aztecs, you know, of course, all throughout that whole. Yeah. So I, I love all that. And I love studying. Uh, it's important to study yeah though. history yes. And, yes. and that resonates with me and it also resonates through the music and this is history right here bro yes this sir. is the old testament that's what's up let's take them back let's go okay so with this uh put this on the live chat what are you gonna play something else brother no, no, go for it okay put that on the live chat tell me what this song is not the kabasa but listen to it Chat, what song is this? Let me know, Anthony. That Añejo funk. What was it? Hold on, let's do it right now. Be true to yourself, second to none. That's nice. Hey, remember we used to do this? <laughs> Just in case somebody thinks Tony is playing the CD. Hold That's on. fun, man. That's... Oh, that bass, no way. That... Man, come on, dog. I'm ready hey, to... Hey, what did uh, uh, Jim Carrey say in the mask say? <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> That's word up. That's word to Jim Carrey, for real, man. I'm loading something up right now. All good, bro. You Take quick. your time. And you know what's funny? Yeah. One thing about the SB12, it loads faster than the MPC, huh? Yeah, you know what? I got a... Well... Uh, it, it's there's a lot more info. Yeah, there's a lot more info on here. So sometimes it just depends on what I have, if it's a couple of samples and stuff. But the traditional thing... You know, I got an SD card in this MPC 3000. Uh -huh. Forad installed an SD card for me. Um, so now I can save, I, you know, I used to roll with the zip drive uh -huh. and uh, so I can tr transfer like so many, oh, almost shit. all of my zip drives. Just I've been able, I haven't done that completely yet because I've just been, you know, here and there and life kicks in and, you know, but whenever I get ready to go and do something, then I'll go through a lot uh -huh. of the zips, but I got a ton of stuff. And same with the, with the, with the floppy disk, he can actually install a SD drive uh -huh. on your SB1200. So I just... We just had a conversation last week about that, and he was able to fix some of the stuff for me on the SB1200. So, Forat Electronics uh, in the Valley, Bruce Forat, definitely, the, like we were talking earlier, Roger Lynn. He was the, the guy who was the number one guy working on all that equipment and fixing the bugs and, you know, uh, just an incredible human being, man. Just oh, really shit. someone who really deserves his, his, uh, his, his respect. Yeah, yeah. Because well, without him, Yo, man, we'd be having a hard time right now, you know, without yeah. being able to fix our drum machines and yeah. stuff like that. So did you load that big up? Yes, I did. Okay, and go ahead and play it, and then I got one loading up right now. All right, perfect. And then we're almost to the end. No! And I'm going to introduce my yeah, very special okay. guest, okay. other than yourself, my brother. Yeah, man. That's a two-bar sample, two-bar loop. Or I should say two bar sequence, and there's more parts to it. I just uh, didn't put them in yet. I don't even know if I got a sequence. So let's see if I got a sequence too. What is this? Let's see what we got. That's the shit right there. I tr 
tripped on that one. It's all right. I think the drummer lost his shoe on that one right there, dog. <laughs> How you go? See, there's just a night, bro, that I could just go off some old school boom bap shit all in fucking night, bro. Man. I don't need to listen to cheap punk. And it's yeah. nice that, yeah. you know, that I can do, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I love yeah. hip-hop, bro. Yeah, and so that's the key, man. Like, we, we, you know, styles, you know, study different styles because it's relative. And then you have certain things that pop up out of all those, you know, funk, soul, jazz. And then, you know, right. your take on that. You know, you think like those musicians once you start to study that music. You know, that's why I say a conversation is so important, especially with real musicians. Let me fix this kick real quick. Go for it. There we go. That's what it was. Huh? Okay, hold up. That sounded like a pair of shoes in the, in the, in the dryer. <laughs> that's right. When it came to the kick and snare. I don't but know I love that. Snare. But I want to fix that. And guess what? There's another part to that sample. I don't want to play it by itself because then, you know, no, 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 I don't no. want the hacks out there. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. And we're just teasing y'all, but, you know, it's serious. There's people out there that will take your ideas and then all of a sudden be like, hey, that was my idea. Like, you know, and, you know, it happens. I see. I feel like this um, when it comes to, to music. You know, nobody owns none of this stuff. They're ideas and they're, and they're uh, but, but it's the fact that you discovered that and that you brought that to the world and it, what you can learn from that, right. that musicianship. See, right. sampling helps us understand what music, musicians were going through whatever era it is. You're a child of 68, right? I'm right. 72. Great music was being produced in the, at that time. Hell yeah. You know, from the 60s into the 70s, even yeah. into the 80s. And so there's so much inspiration. And I feel like if you're a musician, I don't care if it's just a rapper, a singer, whatever it is, uh, even, you don't have to be a vocalist. You could be an instrumentalist. Study music. If you love music, you shouldn't limit yourself. Yeah. Ever. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. That's all. I have. That's my PSA for the night. All right. What's up? <laughs> oh, good, brother. <laughs> Let me find something else. Go for it. I'm. I'm gonna pull something. Hit me with some tone. I got. Uh, I got Ready? some more discs here too. There we go. Okay. What is this song? Put it on the live chat. We Put it on the live chat. If you recognize it. Mm. These are uh, national archives. Hip hop archives. Let's go. Sipping on Super Saco and Gin. Somebody better recognize this shit. That little roll right there is about to start hopping right now, dude. You know what I'm saying? This is just... Oh, no. Three. Come on. I'm going to have to stop it because none of you guys guessed it. Mm, mm, mm. Now, I'll tell you what. Keep that. And don't let anybody... Uh, until. Check. No. What were you talking backwards or? <laughs> <laughs> Who said nope, that? No, nobody. Yeah. I'm gonna leave that one alone. You're gonna have to go That's back, rewind up. it, and put it on the fucking comments. Hey man, so. that was nice right there, man. Hey man, like I said. That's another Q production, right? That's another Quince. That's another DJ Quick. Yes, joint, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Dude, he produced man. that on my first album, bro. And I'm gonna tell you why oh, he produced that, wow. and I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Break it down. Because I sampled Brenton Wood, Lovey Dovey Kind of Loving. Yeah. And the uh, record label couldn't clear it. Oh, wow. They can clear, I'm your puppet. Yeah. They can clear Billy Stewart sitting in the park, but they couldn't clear Brenton Wood because wow. Brenton Wood uh, didn't own his masters. Oh. So somebody wanted all the money. Okay. And we were saying, fuck you. They were hating, huh? Yeah, so they we were hating. We went ahead and went with uh, 
So they, they didn't even want to clear it, or they just wanted to take everything? They wanted to take everything. I see. Yeah. And those were the greedy uh, yeah. publishers and, that and robbed I'm, Brenton Wood, too. And I See, that's the thing. That's what we're sampling. A lot of the times, when we go and we start rearranging the notes and chopping, because we look and listen for textures. Right. So we like the feel of something, and we'll go back and say, you know what, I want to take the notes. That's why when you start to understand more music and stuff like that, that's why I always trip when people would chop stuff yeah. up, and I didn't understand music yet. And then so, you know, I would try to do that and come up with something totally different. That's how Funk Dubious and a lot of that stuff was just like I was right. speaking before on part one, unorthodox. Um, because we were just going for broke. And with that imagination and with, uh, you know, giving ourselves that time to allow something to be created that right. was palatable, that we could actually enjoy and be like, yo, man, y'all don't even know where I got that from because I really right. flipped that. Right. And then people be like, how'd you do that? I, like, I don't even know. You know, but that's to, magic. I wanna I want you to play that track. Yeah. I'm gonna play mine. Okie doke. And then I'm gonna introduce the artist I'm working with. All right. So if you guys wanna find out who I'm working with, make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, <laughs> and let them know that Tony A from Rolling Radio is about to introduce the artist that he's working with. Yeah, let's play. A producer is only as good as the artist that he's working with, bro. That's so. right. That's right. Oh, snap. Okay, I got one in here. And you know what? I got a cat that rapped on this. And I got to give props to him. This cat that I've never met, he sent me a acapella, and we worked on the, uh, you know, put this on this track. And since then, I've been able to mix the record and master it with the one and only the great Mike Frankie, uh, who really put his thing on this song and yeah. really made it sound really lovely. But with this song here, this was just the the, if you will, the uh, the foundation of the idea. It's loading right now, and it takes a second. I mean, you got anything up there? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You got I mean, just something you could tell. Okay, on, everybody, uh, if you recognize this track, make sure you guys put it on the live chat. Here we go. You guys better put this one, one no up. No time. Let's go. <laughs> put it on the live chat, y'all. Second to none. No, say it. Did they guess it? Say, yeah, I'm not even gonna say it. Did somebody <laughs> guess it? If not, you cannot guess it, then don't worry about it. <laughs> can we buy it, buy it? <laughs> don't worry, but I'm still loading over here. Look at this thing. This thing is loading. It's all good, homie. It's all good. Yeah. I'm gonna show oh, myself another shot. Do this. Uh, do I, this for me. Load this beat up for I, me. I really for, hold on. Yeah. Oh, you loading something? Yeah. Oh, I even shoot, forgot how many right. shots I took, bro. But I'm feeling good. It's my birthday. Yeah, man. As long as I don't wake up hungover, because I gotta go to the fucking gym, homie. Yeah, and you know what? We ate good earlier. Thank you to, yes. to everybody that you know, provided the food. Of course, the drinks, 310 Micheladas. Um, you know, thank you for the ceviche, for the yes. carne asada. Yes. Um, you the know, cake. And the bomb. cake was excellent, Brody. Really good. And um, so we want to thank everybody for that. Yes, 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 yes. Most definitely. Delicious. Very delicious. Okay, let me play this right quick. Where yes, are we at yes, with yes. this while that's loading? Uh, boom. How are we looking on the clock? Good, okay? good, good. All right. You know perfect. what? Uh, let me give you a quick shout out really quick because yeah. I know she's leaving tomorrow. Yes. Ms. Gatti, come over come here, please. Come here, girl. Make a guest appearance real quick. Can you stand right yeah. here, por favor? Yeah. She was just here the other day. Yeah. But, you know, we got to show love. We got to show respect to oh, Ms. Gatti from... Yes, yes. Thank yes. you for having me. This Safe travels. Me. You know what? Every time you come, uh, you have an open door here. Much love, much respect. Gracias. Brooklyn in the house. Yes, I definitely enjoy my time here. The mariscos were bomb. The piñas were bomb. And the interview was bomb. <laughs> Thank and, you, darling. And the yeah. tequila was bomb. Gracias. Yes. Wait, Salud. What, what was that? New York Chicanas? Or what is that? New York Chicanas. That's, That's right. right. The first oh, New York yeah. Chicana right the there. The first New York. I was telling you, I'm the Kid Frost of new york hell yeah yeah let's do that hell yeah that's what's up york, so. that's what's up you gotta have that you know, yeah. and then he told me he was he worked with kid frost i'm like that's so crazy i just said that yeah. but, uh, 
So Ain't that something? How she's something. absolutely my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Stay that's blessed. what we call that's synchronicity right there. Yes. You know, Hang so. out. We're gonna take some pictures after. We're almost done. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I'll All good. You guys, keep doing your thing. Thank yes. you. Safe travels too. Back to the yes, yes. to the Big Apple. To the Big Apple. Let me run this right quick. Sequence nine. Boom. Let's go one time for your mind. <laughs> Ah shit. Pause one and my man, God Ella. I got verses and everything in here, dude. I got six minutes of sampling time in here, so I was able to save a few, most of the production. Here we go. I'm looking for ways to please time, loving the shine. Throwing in the night, love with the hustle and grind. Joking with my mind, my listeners, boutique flow. Feeling like a magician at a freak show. Position under a microscope for people. At the end of the visit, notice the ordinary people. Pain is hate, but I keep it all peaceful. Other niggas I know, keep it peaceful. Can't play them like the game in the street code It's gold money out of cover in the heat blow Never let it get to your head or ego Not concerned with what he said or he sold I build my foundation Brick by brick, stick by stick It's that shit in it, I'll spit But politics hold us back, bit by bit Looking for that old feeling but the shit don't switch I bend out when the pen's out Therapeutic when the music blasts loud, blasts loud it's my letter to hip hop, I send out The game break me down, but I don't tap out I bend out from the pins out Therapeutic when the music blasts loud, blasts loud It's a letter to hip hop, I send out The game break me down, but I don't tap out We will, we will, we will, we will be here no. forever We will, we will, we will, we will be here forever Tony A. Ralph M. We will, we will be here forever. We will, we will, we will, we will be here forever. Hey Ralph. Word up, right? We don't even need a fucking laptop, homie. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, I got six minutes of sampling time in here, right? And it's over. And I gotta give a shout out to Pause One, who's also on this song. I didn't get to put, his verse didn't fit in here, but he's on the final mix right. and mastered version. So this is what set it off. Yeah, 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 awesome. Yeah. I got 168 bars. I just took one sequence and, and, and copied it like 80 times. You know what I'm saying? And, I'm gonna play your other track. Oh, we got one more beat. All right, cool. So anyway, that record's gonna come out. Uh, eventually. This, this is Los Angeles. This is yeah. Los Angeles. This is Los so Angeles. So 0099 if you will. This is Los Oops. Here yeah. we go. Oh, see how I put that on the I love that truncation? Shit. Hell yeah. At the end, it just delays it. <laughs> it's crazy, right? You ready? Go for it. Yeah. Now, I made this beat back in like 94. And it never, it never came out. I think this was like the foundation to like rock on one of those songs that we started i call it we called it the rubles beat rubles is russian money so we were like we were on one we were like yo we're making rubles you know like you know russian yeah. russian jewish money you know what i'm saying <laughs> we were on one but you know like i said we think outside the box and we try to bring that creative spark when it comes to funk dubious you know etc okay so that was it Another part with the baseline, but we're good, man. Thank you. That's, we that's we got to save right some there. for the part three. Yeah, man. Okay. Yes. At this time, um, Carnal, can you call him right there? Yeah. What's up, bro, bro? Okay. Oh. Can you call? Oh, give me a second. Let me load up this track. Yeah. And then I'm gonna introduce you. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the artist that brought me back out of retirement. Okay. World premiere. Yeah. Man, man, I, man, I straight man. dusted off my cleats. I was like, bam. You know how you got <laughs> shoes and shit? <laughs> when I met this kid and uh, I heard his music, I was like, oh, this is it right here. This is it right here. So if you didn't call anybody, you need to slap the shit out of yourself. <laughs> so, uh, so with that being said, let me go ahead and come in, big dog. Okay. Stand right there, big dog. Mr. D in the motherfucking place. So I'm gonna be going ahead and working with Mr. D. We're gonna put together some shit. And uh, we're about to take over everything, bro. 
Seriously, we're about to take over everything. And I'm going to hit and saying it right here. Rodian Radio. D, you want to say anything, bro? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to you. Happy birthday. Thank, Thank you. you for the opportunity, mainly. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the homies from the neighborhood, Hayes Up. And a big thank you to all of my supporters. You know what I mean? Yes. We couldn't do it without them, you know what I mean? Exactly, bro. So a big thank you to them. Stay tuned. You know what I mean? Gonna do some big things, you know what I mean? And a big thank you to my family, too. My mom and my pops. Straight up. Hey, gracias, carnal. Once again, thank we'll you. be in the studio soon. We're What's working up? together. That's it right there. Continue Continue to success, man. I wish you the best because that's what's up. West West. That's the artist that brought me out of retirement right there. So make sure you guys let everybody know. So, gracias, carnal. We'll be working together soon. Yeah, Mr. D in the house. You heard it here first on Rhodium Radio. Exclusives. Sweet chocolate mama. <laughs> where's where's Miss Pac-Man? <laughs> Okay, so then I realized, I said, wait a minute, that sounds like colors too, right? Remember Pac-Man was a right, color? Right, 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 but that right. was, they didn't refer to the woman as Pac-Man. That was, it was a, a, didn't they call, who was Pac-Man? That was a Pac-Man in colors, right? Yeah, because he, he drew a yellow card. <laughs> so I started going back and watching the video and I was like, damn, who the hell is he talking to? But then, yeah. it's just funny, dog. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. Those are just great moments right there. So All good, bro. Glad to be back again. Definitely a pleasure and, a, and an honor. And, um, you know, we just want to send a big shout out to everybody out there that, you know, supports us, follows us. Of course, Funk Dubious Music on Instagram, uh, on Facebook, DJ Ralph M, D double E, space J A Y, space Ralph, space M. I got the, uh, the I got the, uh, what is that, twitch.tv and the YouTube channel getting ready to, stru- getting ready to pop Hell up. Yeah. So I will make an announcement once that's ready. But first, tap in with me over on IG, Funk Dubious Music. And I want to thank Tony A. I want to send him the biggest happy birthday. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The happiest birthday ever. And, you know, continued success. And I like how you're doing things, man. Thank you, my brother. Word up. First of all, I want to say thank you to Ralph M., the Mexican. Word up. Much love, much respect, Carnal, for coming, chilling with me, and um, blessing me with the interview. And... You're going to be back for part three. And then we're going to give them what they want because I know they're going to want to have the funk dubious Don't story. Don't hate us. Don't hate us for that. We want to make you pay attention to what we're doing before we build up to even greater stories. Yeah. Now, everybody knows and connects Ralph M. with Funk Dubious, but that's not what it's all about for Ralph M. Ralph M. got his start at 15 years old, working with cats like M. Walk, featuring the Union on Capitol Records. A lot of cats don't know that. Go back and YouTube those records. I'm just amazing. One of the first rappers that I ever worked with was Tab Doe. T-A-B-B Doe, D-O-E. Check that song out. It's called I'm Just Amazing. And, and, and prior to that, with Kid Frost, and with I even worked with like different artists throughout out before Funk Dubious, so I'm going to just leave it at that. Yes, exactly, because you're going to be back for part three with the MPC, the FB12, and we may surprise you with something extra. You never know. As so, we always do around this time. As we always do around this time. Let me go ahead and give a shout out once again to Anthony, uh, the hip-hop Jedi. This guy, he can work the board with his fucking... Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? With the He's a true around blessing, man, because yeah. great engineers are hard to find. Yeah, he can take pictures with his eyes closed. So, uh, let me give a shout out to my boy, Omar, uh, DJ Old Boy. Let me go ahead and give a shout out to Julian, one of the best tattoo artists out there and one of the best uh, artists, just artists, period. DJ Gap, DJ The C, the Boom Bad meets the G shit. Yes. Let me give a shout out to uh, 310 Micheladas for blessing us with the pineapple Micheladas. Thank you. Yes, let me give a shout out to Miss Gatis from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my son, B. Scandalous. And I want to give a shout out to me. So, uh, hey Tony, you're a nice guy. Happy birthday! I wanna, thank you, my brother. And I want to give a shout out to OG Invincible, Invincible for blessing me with a tequila bottle. Everybody who blessed me, uh, Tina Bina, uh, Magic Girl. Uh, you know what? Hold on, I gotta give a special shout out to Erica, uh, BNB Entertainment, and Bella for being a blessing so i want to thank you guys much love much respect we'll be back uh wednesday two special guests ralph m this is not the end that rhymes it's, it's only ralph the beginning it's not the end. yeah it's only the beginning <laughs> we got more to come and uh safe life safe travels to let's got this yeah and tony a and mr d 
okay? We're gonna work some magic. We're gonna take over this shit. That's it. I'm, I'm prophesying this shit, bro. That's right. And that's it. Hey, mark my words. We're, we're gonna take over. We out of here. Anthony, bless us. Oh, it's a party, y'all. Tony A. Happy 53rd. Muchas gracias. Actually, if you flip that, I'm 35. Ah.